welcome to the planning board of June meeting of June 10th. Um, and I think our first, I'm sorry, I just dashed in a tiny bit late. Our first public hearing starts at 7.35, I think, so I have two minutes to collect myself. So, oh, so our first public hearing, we do have to take the vote, is a continued public hearing for 76 Main Street. They have requested to be continued to when? Okay. And do we have it? Um, a time, or do we? Did we research? Do we need to have a time? Um, I, I just I think yeah, I think it's my, my, my okay. Okay. So 7.30. So I'll entertain a motion to continue the public hearing for 76 Main Street to July 22nd, 22nd at 7.30. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Two minutes. Just whistling a happy tune until 7:35. Yeah, you might as well set up. Yep. So, um, just for board members, um, we are all eligible to vote on this, including our newly elected members, because there's been no testimony taken, even though it was opened a long time ago. So, this is really the this is this is the first meeting where we're hearing testimony. Through the chair, mm -hmm. um, I, I have the notes that came this afternoon yeah. in my email. Are there, is there a printed out version? Um, Patrick? Of what? Of the minutes from last week, uh, last meeting. I have a printed copy. I gave her a printed out version of the minutes. We're probably not going to review those today. And no, them, right? definitely so not, because they weren't posted. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. There will be time. Excellent. Thank you. Can you say I had something not related to a hearing? Yes. Okay. So I requested the enrollment projections from the superintendent, the most recent ones from December, and I'm perfect. Gonna, and I'll share them with the group. Awesome. Um, uh, by email, you're just going to send them around, or? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I'll copy John so that the town has. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Amy, those new numbers, what time frame do they cover in total? I believe it's a 10 year out, so 10 years past, 10 years future. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for doing that. They're, they're already a little behind, but they're already <laughs> behind. <laughs> Shocker, sure. I know. <laughs> This year's? Well, they were done in December, so. Okay, so. But there are more students have enrolled since, since December. <laughs> okay. An attractive spot. So I will entertain a motion to open the public hearing, the public hearing for Massanoc Woods on West Elm Street. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So we are just waiting patiently until you're ready. And one more thing, this, uh, this is Chairwoman. Um, I might need to leave, be leaving around nine today. So okay. It right. might be for a little while. It might be for the whole time. So I'll play okay. by, playing by ear. Play by ear. Do what you need to do. So this, Thanks for letting us know. Car. No. Mm -hmm. So we typically um, let the proponent 
give us an overview and then we'll ask the principal planner for his thoughts. He's already shared with us um, a lot of thoughts in his memo, but um, anything from there. And then I do have an outline. I apologize it wasn't in the packet, but I have a, a, an example to follow. So I'll detail out the outline. Our process often is to um, then hear from Beta and then um, if there are any other town department comments and then to discuss if there are anything anything we need to add to the typical agenda. That, that's, and then we go from there. So welcome. Thank you. Peter, why don't you start? Okay. Uh, for the record, Peter Barberi on behalf of Aspinock and, and Bruce. Uh, so what we have here tonight is, is uh, changes to three buildings. So looking at the site plan on the giant, we got, oh yeah, okay. So we're talking about, this works. It won't light up on the screen. It won't. It doesn't work, it's not lighting up. Uh, so when you come in, off of the main road, the buildings that you see in dark are the two areas of the buildings that were changing. For the north of the screen is units 23 and 24, and just below those are 21 and 22. So they're kind of within a little isolated island. There's no units immediately abutting any of those uh, around uh, the back side as well as the, the it's called the southern side. Uh, they continue to be set back, the basic requirement of setbacks from streets. So we have changed the, the footprints of the buildings in interiors, and we can go through the individual plans and the changes, uh, but overall they fit within the building envelope that, that was originally approved. So looking at 21 and 22, which again are the southerly dark buildings on that, uh -huh. we had an increase of, of 47 square feet on, on the main level. Uh, we modified some of the living areas and we added uh, an increase in the garage from 20 to 24 feet. We moved the mudroom, uh, the size of the study was relocated, enlarged. As to unit 22, uh, the area of that forest floor was actually reduced by 107 square feet. And then the upper levels were also modified and increased by 1580 square feet separately. So this is what you see on that photograph right there. That is the depiction of what the unit will be. It's consistent with the uh, CECLs that were previously approved in the nature of the architectural materials and all those things. We're not changing any of that. Uh, and then again, the description of the changes or on the packet that you have, uh, and again, that's the, the better blow up of those. Uh, they continue to all be the same number of bedrooms, same construction, same element. Uh, we met with the design review board in April uh, on the changes to the CECLs as well as the changes uh, to 23 and 24, and I'll describe those. They didn't have any issues with those at that point in time. The second uh, thing we're changing a little more complicated is a single unit off of Elm Street. Before we get to that, the other change, again, is the units uh, 23 and 24. to the floor area. Uh, basically, unit 24 was expanded more to the right. We switched off the site plan uh, and increased, the whole footprint was increased by about 600 square feet. Uh, however, the upper level was reduced. Again, same number of bedrooms, same whole architecture of the whole thing, uh, but there was more room, as you saw from the site plan, to that north element uh, that we created a deck uh, in more room off of that and really opened up the middle of the unit uh, for the family room, dining room, and kitchen. 
So we increased the square footage a bit uh, on that one uh, and less on 23 uh, in the upper levels were both decreased in size from what was previously approved. Again, we came, kept the same separation distance around the road, the same setback from the drive leading to these units, uh, and those were the changes. And the Design Review Board, just for the record, has seen both of those, right? And mm -hmm. have no issues with either of them. Okay. So. I can give you our comments if you want, mm -hmm. um, which they've done. So if the garage is gonna be at the front, we wanted a little more detail, even though it's a garage, which they've done. And if the um, garage was going to be at the side, we wanted at least a window, even though it wasn't the garage, because it just makes breaks up the facade. So, and they were agreeable. Yeah. So. so those four units, you know, again, we met with the design. They really didn't ask us to change any of those. Uh, the other unit we're talking about changing, or in essence creating, is the single family that was on West Elm Street that is part of the original decision the board wanted us to remove and we've now developed a plan for that uh, and in regards to that that's the whole amendment of the special permit uh under your special permit requirements that you're supposed to have a permit a buffer of 100 feet around the development with the original approval the board reduced that to 75 from again that site plan that you saw uh, but because of, of, of wetlands and the way that was laid out in the septic system that is necessary for 5 West Rum. We can't meet that requirement. We're asking for waivers of that. We have designed uh, that development so that it complies with the dimensional requirements in the underlying district, which is a 50-foot front setback and a 25-foot side setback. Uh, but we can't meet the uh, dimensional requirements or the special permit requirements. The original building didn't meet them either. Uh, so we're asking for that relief and that amendment of the special permit. Um, in going through with the design review, uh, again, that was a little bit different from us because what it was was a normal duplex, which we had originally shown to the design review board. But what happens is that common wall that you don't have the duplex unit next to, uh, they were asked us to dress that up a little bit more. So we went back to the design review board in May uh, and at the same time, the engineer looked at the concept from the viewpoint of the layout uh, of the residents coming from West Elm. And we developed a, a separate alternative, uh, which is a, a, a driveway, excuse me, a garage off the side rather than off the front. So the plans that you have in your part of your package, uh, we just updated on Friday, so you don't have the newest ones. I've got those and I'll show them. Mr. 
Dr. Barbieri. Can, can you just give us, for those of us that weren't around for the early hearings on this, can you give us a little bit of history? Because my understanding is that the original plan was to keep the existing house. Uh, and so I just it would be helpful to hear a little bit more detail about what's changed from when the um, original special permit was approved. The actual paperwork. tear down that building because it was not it was an old building in need of much repair so when we went through looking at trying to just rehabbing it the cost of rehab in the size of the building didn't fit with anything else that was taking place in the development in fact the not having been involved in the original approval the original site plan that was presented for the project actually had driveway coming off that lot and apparently through discussions with the board, the drive was switched on the back where it is now. Um, that lot, however, was kept as part of the, the condominium, even though it really doesn't have any, uh, do you have the site plan again, the overall site plan? Um, so again, you can see it down on the, the right-hand corner. Uh, that's a lot we're talking about. But originally, the road was going to come in there and connect and loop around. And ultimately, the plan approved coming off the north plan, uh, the, north, the northern portion of the site. Uh, this lot could have been separated out because, as you can see, it really never has any relationship to the rest of the, to the condominium in the nature of it doesn't use the roadways, it doesn't have the drainage system, it's got its own separate system. For all intent and purposes at that point in time, it probably should have been backed out. It can be backed out and still leave the entire development with the required open space for the, for the special permit requirements for this type of a development. Uh, but for some reason, it was not. Um, and that's something we're looking at and would have to come back and ask the board to amend it to pulling it out because there's legally no real reason for that lot to be part of this condominium development. Again, it doesn't share in any of the aspects of the open space, the roadway, no maintenance issues as well. Uh, but that property was looked, as I saw it in the decision, wanting to be upgrade, uh, upgraded, and by the time you did that in the septic system, it really left no alternative but to basically remove it and it re replace it with a unit that is being built within the development. Okay, so, so just so I understand, so the original special permit was approved with the intention of keeping that unit, correct? And then at some point- I was point, not involved in the original permitting, so- Upgrading or get it or removing it was what I heard. I don't know that there was specific to keeping it. Um, uh, I mean, it's a teardown, it really- So was the original plan to tear it down? I think it was, and, and, and to build a home in the same spot. Through the, I through think the chair? That, I don't think no, that it was necessarily to. We're going to hold our questions until we get home, to that. But it was to build a home in that spot, and they just sort of left. Uh, they, they didn't really go any further. Okay. I was just, uh, yeah. this is their lawyer's yeah. letter? Yeah, go right ahead. Here. Okay, so um, it's, it says uh, from the Fletcher and Tilton. Um, the 2005 approval included waivers so that the existing house at 5 West Elm Street may remain in its present location. So it wasn't a teardown initially. Just wanted to clarify okay. that. It may have been later on in 2013, but at the 2005, this is according mm -hmm. to their letter. So. Perfect. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I was on the board when the 2013 discussion was happening, 
and I can counter some of the things that we're saying and maybe give some context to some of the things that were said. But some of the wording that's been used, I think, is very misleading. Um, we agreed that uh, the building would either be restored or could be torn down, but not replaced because of the issues he was pointing out. And one of the reasons there was not a driveway through there is because of the wetlands and uh, issues with uh, what you're going to do with that property in the future uh, and leaving that for a future decision. Um, it's not like it wasn't addressed, it wasn't thought about, it wasn't planned. This project was fully planned and approved for what it was, and it keeps coming back and changing and changing and changing. So, no, I was there. The, the house is either going to be restored or torn down, and that's up to you. So there's a, this is new discussion to put a new unit up there? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I think we understand. Did you have anything more in your presentation? That we can fully describe changes if you'd like, but so what we were hoping to do, again, this is the, the site plan um, with the driveway coming off the front. So that would be the depiction of the unit with the driveway off the front. Uh, it is a question from the viewpoint of the Conservation Commission in which one they're going to allow us to build because as you can see from the site plan, we're within the, the, the buffer from wetlands to the left-hand side. So they may not allow us to do the side entry, which has a little bit more grading impact within that buffer. So we're hoping if we reach agreement on, on changes to this unit that you would do it in the alternative and whichever one the Conservation Commission approved, that would be the one that we would construct. When do you see the con come? We haven't, we haven't applied yet. You haven't applied yet. Okay, I think that it would be, a, I, I'm not, not going to speak for the whole board, but I think that I can say that it, is, it would be uncommon for us to approve two alternatives depending on what the con -com decides. So I don't know that that's a, an expectation you want to count on. Um, how about the principal planner? So <clears throat> there's two decisions here. You've got the special permit decision, which concerns Five West Elm. You've got the design changes to units you know, 21 through 24. Um, the change in the units doesn't seem significant. The design review board signed off on those. It's mostly internal type stuff. Um, so that would just have to meet the site plan requirements. Uh, I think there's a decision that needs to be made by the planning board, whether it's major or minor. The applicant has requested that we advertise for major just in case so that there's a decision that can be made. So if you guys choose it as a major, uh, that decision can be made today. Okay. For that. If it's a minor, it wouldn't need to be advertised anyway. So that one's okay. So, uh, the special permit. Um, I see the applicant's argument that it's kind of separate from the development um, and therefore it does conform to the underlying zoning however it is part of the special permit so it would be the board's purview to review those setbacks in, in context of the special permit and uh, the board is able to grant those waivers so it would be able to grant the relief needed but it would be up to the board to determine whether that is appropriate so for Specifically, it is part of the special permit, even though it is sort of set aside from the development. Yeah. Because it was, as Frank pointed out, it was allowed to either be upgraded or torn down as well. Right. Did you have a question? Um, I, I, again, I'm just interested in the history here, but I mean, given that it's a, it sounds like it's always planned to be its own separate dwelling. So why was it included in the special permit to, to begin with? I mean, again, originally the roadway was coming off there. So okay. The okay. So that's why. Okay. Thank you. And and then that was never changed when the road was shifted. It likely okay. should have been leaving it in the underlying distance with the 50 foot setback, 25 foot setback, setback which we meet, because again, the existing house doesn't meet your setbacks for the district because of the special permit. Okay, um, and uh, is, are there any engineering uh, difficulties or challenges at all? Um, I don't know if they had any comments. I don't believe they did. Yeah. 
I mean, we've got to get a, a new septic approval on Concom for the unit on West Elm. Uh, the other two units, excuse me, the other four units, the roadways, there's nothing changed site-wise. It's just the footprint of the units. Yeah, I had some note that there was an open issue from the Board of Health. That's the septic, right? The Board of Health? Uh, we filed with them the, the, the site plan application in, in all the plans. I haven't heard from them, although I did see a letter just saying that the, the septic testing had to be witnessed and all the normal requirements. Uh, and again, the same numbers of bedroom as originally approved. So, you know, there's nothing there than the normal process we have to go through for the septic approval. Um, and when did you file with the Board of Health? What? We haven't when? filed yet. 31? The Board of Health, yeah, no. You haven't yet, or, I'm sorry. No, there's, there's a, a septic field in the ground from the previous house. Oh, okay, so the design, I guess, is to use the existing, existing if they allow it, because yeah, the existing the, the was more than two bedrooms. The is, is the uh, proposed. Uh, okay, so you still have to utilize the Board of Health process, right, because it's Title V? situation well we've right? got to get them to agree that we can use the existing system for the new house which should be fine because this is only a two-bedroom dwelling and that's what right we, first did you, then board of health this did you did time. you uh, have you initiated with the board of health was my question yeah, not yet we haven't filed for a title five okay and just to clarify I think I believe you're saying it's con -com, then board of health final so not say board of health and con -com have to be filed yep can I have another yes. question? Yeah. And then I, I wouldn't have guessed this, but it looks like it was built in 1940, so it's more than 75 years old. Is that correct? Or I don't know what year it was built. The, okay. So the property record card on the town website says 1940, which surprised me. It looks newer than that. But but so then we'll also have to go through historical commission for a demolition per permit, right? Is that correct? It's more than 75 years. Old. Yeah, we'll, we'll check the year. Uh, I don't check. know the year. Okay. I doubt that it's historically significant, but it's just have to go through the process. Yeah. Yep. Through the chair, uh, what was some of the reasons the, I can imagine some of the reasons the uh, initial entryway to the development was moved, but uh, if you could just go through why the driveway didn't go through this lot at that time. Like if it was initially planned to go through this lot, why, did, why was it moved to the backside? Neither of us were part of that permitting. Yeah. So I, I don't so think. We, we acquired the development post, uh, Post approval. That approval process. Several years. Uh, okay. Five or six years after that. Um, the next uh, the next item on the agenda is other town departments and comments, and I think that um, the board of health and concom are the the two open ones that I know. Um, we always ask about the fire department um, access. I presume um, that's. All set, or have you talked to the fire department? We have not. We have not. I wouldn't think there would be a problem. Again, the, the unit on West Elm will be a normal house on a normal road, and, and the other changes aren't impacting any of the roadway patterns to the units. Yeah, we do have a relatively new bylaw that does uh, drive that process a little bit. It is very worth asking him, particularly on some of our more um, uh, challenging roads and. <laughs> Areas. I was going to say scenic, but I don't know that it's a scenic road. That, it, that has its own connotation. Um, but it's it's very definitely worth asking the fire department and avoiding any challenges there. We'll, have we'll do that. Okay. Um, can you think of any other town departments that necessarily? I think that one. Okay. Um, I, yes, I do have a question about other town departments. Yes. Uh, at some point, there was talk about making uh, like a landing or a dock uh, at the end of the property on the west side of the lake, or the side of the lake that's there. Is that still a, a possibility? Um, we constructed a boathouse. Okay. It, that's uh, that's been constructed and it is housing boats and people are usually utilizing them. So, so the parks and rec has nothing to do with with that kind of situation. It's use the lake as in they're restricted to that side of the lake because of the bridge the land bridge but okay, it's nice to know that that's completed 
Um, so at this point, um, planning board members and the public are invited to add to the outline if there are um, issues that we want to make sure we cover that aren't on the typical outline. And I apologize, I'm working off a draft nobody has in front of them. But um, let me just read it really quickly. Planning board members add to the outline, schedule a site walk if needed, um, detailed discussion on things like the conservation commission filing, um, zoning compliance, road and lot layout design, concept plan, um, traffic, stormwater management, utilities, the septic system, open space. Some of this <coughs> is, is uh, not going to be necessary in, in detail because it's a small piece of this special permit. Um, historical features, um, I don't think that we're going to have any open beta issues. It would be final beta issues. Um, and uh, I would say on this one, we would be deciding early whether it was a major or minor um, change on the, the two sets of two units. Anybody have anything else they want to add? Anybody from the public have anything to add to the outline? You, what, we need to have you come forward, introduce yourself so the folks at home and we know who you are, and then uh, your address. Um, my name is Lori Hurley. I live at Two Lake Point Way. Um, I am a four-year resident of Hawkington, and I've been living in Massanac Woods since August of 2016. I don't have fancy boards, but I did um, put together. Did you want? Uh, at, at, you can pass these things out. What we're specifically asking for at the moment is whether you have things you want to add to the outline but we will certainly take all your testimony. Okay, um, so I did that after? P potentially, yes. So I'd like to add landscaping. Um, Lands they take care of consideration because my unit, um, although it, there's no unit that abuts, the back of that unit will look right into my bedroom. Like. So the back of, okay, so that, um, the back of, just so I know, the unit that used to be the house and is going to be a new unit, no, or? Sorry, that's okay. If you look at the, the four. So 21, 22, out. 23, 24. Yeah. Um, so I'm the first one in, so basically the back of their house will look into. Yep, it's definitely the time to add landscaping to the conversation. We'll talk about that for sure. Um, and is there anything else you want to add to the outline? No, but I will get an opportunity to speak before you guys go. Yes, oh. yes, absolutely. All right, it's my yep. No, well, welcome, and I'm glad you're here. I. Um, How about landscaping and screening, maybe? Yeah. Okay. May I look at your draft agenda? You may. That's my guess. You've been carrying this around for a while, haven't you? Yeah, you know, I was lucky to find it. It was a little, a little low. It's this dot matrix. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, anybody else have anything to add? So we haven't discussed it yet, but we do intend to provide. Um, landscape screening in the rear of these units and uh, we can uh, prepare a landscaping plan and add that to the record for discussion. Yeah, that will probably be really helpful. Okay. Yep. Okay. Ready? Yep. Um, okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is we typically schedule a site walk if folks are interested in a site walk. Well, would that depend if it's a major or minor? Uh, not necessarily. I guess it depends if people want a site walk, but, but um, I think that that might factor in if people feel that it's minor, they might not feel they need to. Or people. I'd, I'd, I'd like a site walk in particular for five, um, for five Elm Street. Yes, that, the new, yes. the old house, new yeah. unit. Yeah. Yeah, and I wouldn't mind actually if, at the same time just taking a twirl and seeing the whole thing. Great. Okay. So um, we very often do them on Saturday mornings at 9. This is an opportunity um, to walk the site, um, ask some general questions. No testimony is not a part of the hearing process. No testimony or commitments are made at that point, but it's a nice way to get to see um, what is happening and what might be happening and things that um, might affect pieces of our decision. Um, so the public is welcome. Uh, the planning board members um, work to support that. 
Um, so I don't know what are, what are what is everybody's availability on Father's Day weekend? On Saturday. Saturday. Uh, I'm, I'm running in the Timlin race, so. Mm. That's Saturday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, good for you. <laughs> um, maybe um, the following Saturday is what the twenty second. We'll be out of town. You'll be out of town? I'm out of town as well. All right, we're going to have to pick one, see this is how it goes. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is that, um, for example, I was not able to go to one uh, at the time it was, it was scheduled, but nothing keeps us. I presume we're welcome to go out if we're, a member is not able to go to the, the walk itself, can go and walk around and see it. Of course. Um, so is the 15th work for everybody else? What about, what about a Thursday? What about what? A Thursday. Maybe more people would be a considered, th yeah. Thursday? Thursday. Thursday. Evening or? Yeah, morning, just evening. evening. Maybe it's uh, it's dark at 8.30 now. So maybe 7, 6.37 would, would a time during the week work for people? Um, it's not perfect for me, but I leave it to the um, other members of the board. Does somebody want to do a weeknight or a Saturday morning? For me, it depends more on the particular day, whether Thursday or Saturday is better. So I don't object to a Thursday. All right. Um, so uh, Thursday it would have to be after the 15th, right? Would we? I mean, you'd have to post it tomorrow morning if it was going to be this Thursday. So technically, if it's a site walk without any deliberation, you don't have it, don't have to post it. Do we usually post it? We do. We usually yeah. Post okay. It. That's what I thought. So, I love checking boxes and keeping it. You know, um, but we could post it tomorrow morning. You, we. That's cute of me to say we. <laughs> you folks could post it on um, tomorrow morning, and it would be in time for Thursday afternoon if we if picked we Thursday. Eight o'clock. And then in the sidewalk. And in, in what time in the morning? Nine o'clock. No, she was talking about in the oh, evening. Oh, okay. Yeah. So six so uh, six thirty p.m. this Thursday or nine a.m. on this Saturday. What's your What's your pick there, Amy? I don't think I can do either. The okay. This week. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of work. Um, Frank. Uh, Scouts so Thursday and Saturday it might be better. For me. But I I've been there. I can. It's not. It's okay. not, not a big deal for that. Jerry. I can't do either. Can't do either. Okay. So, um, the next weekend, you're away? The following weekend? Yeah. yeah. But I can do it on my own. Okay. How about you, Patrick? What we'll did be you say? next Saturday, 21st. The 21st? Or 22nd? 22nd? 21st, yeah. Okay. So, how about Saturday the 22nd at 9? I can do that. I'm, gonna, I'm going to bow out. My future is unpredictable at the moment. I have a family member who's ill, so... Um, okay. So, yeah. um, so I'm going to go on my own. I'll go all on right. My own. So, um, okay. I don't want to. Uh, okay. Um, if we tried for the Thursday, you can just would you just rather go on your own? It's more flexible. I think I'd just rather go on my own okay. at this point. All right. Yeah. I'm just checking unless, my calendar. This, unless it was the, yeah, this Thursday. Well, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I am available on the 22nd. I'm tw 22nd is okay for me. Frank. Probably. I'll go on my own. Okay. Continue this I can make the 22nd. Okay. And uh, Mary, you're away. And I don't know about Dave, if you can shoot him an email just to let him know we've got one planned for. Um, so it'll be uh, the June 22nd, Saturday, June 22nd at 9. Mm -hmm. Where should we meet you? Would you like to start in the subdivision or out on? Probably makes sense to be in so we can park our cars off of West Elm. Okay. So where, where's a good place? So I think that the location of the units will be self-evident when you pull in and okay. we'll just meet uh, right, right there. Okay. It'll be easy to see. This. So the new units? Yeah, where, where we, yeah the, the area that hasn't been developed is yep. somewhat self-evident. Saying self-evident so I won't get lost. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a lot of responsibility you're taking small. right there. Good <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And, and you'll come, see coming into the site where the existing building has been taken down on West Elm as, as you drive by and come up to the. So the okay, so we got a mission. Let's go. 
Call okay, I'm just putting it in my calendar. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so we talked about the Conservation Commission filing. That is to be done, and so we don't have a status on that. Um, I don't, do you think we should decide on the internal units, the major and minor, before we keep going? What do you think? I What's just have feeling? one question because I sort of caught the end, tail end of what you said. You said you can tell when you drive in where the existing building is gone. What, well, which, we, which building are you talking about? We, well, it, it's the it, it's the proposed site for the, the two duplexes. If we put the site plan back up, I can uh, I can be specific about uh, direction. So as we come in in the entrance at, yep. the, at the very top, uh, the dark areas are. Uh, uh, or, or two unconstructed locations, yep. and that's where we're going to be. So it's going to be right in front of us when we pull it. So uh, if we drive in, <coughs> and you can just pull over to the right, and we're, we're going to be there. Okay. Yep. Madam Chair, <coughs> yes. just from a process perspective, yeah. I, I actually think it's cleaner to talk about these separately, at least discussion-wise. That's, that's my take on it. I don't know if that, that makes yeah, it well, messier, I, but I, I just sort of feel like we're talking about some design changes that may or may not be impactful, and we're talking about um, you know the, the location of a, of a unit that is kind of its own entity. Yeah. I don't disagree. You mean so to run through the whole process for the two sets of two units? Well, I mean, it, it sounds like... like, like if I understand it, is that first we decide whether the changes are are that's what I was just yeah just asking. Minor I or feel major. Like, I feel like that for the two sets of two units is a different discussion. Yes, right. I would agree, and I just even in terms of the the public that's here, um, I don't know where other people's interests lie, but I mean maybe we can make things a little bit more efficient and talk about one first and then move on to the other. I'm fine doing that. So we'll talk about the um, changes to the um, 21, 22, 23, and 24 first. So I feel like that's going to be easier. Um, and, and even a lot of the agenda items, those are going to be really quickly because I don't think there's I a think lot so of too. impact there. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so I don't think there are issues with zoning compliance. Um, there are no issues, I don't think, in front of us as far as road or lot layout and design. Is that Stop me if you think that I'm going too fast past it on these. On these. Um, traffic. Um, stormwater management is sort of not applicable because that was done. Right? Um, utilities for those for 21, 22, 23, and 24 are all part of, or nothing's changing with those. Right. Um, open space. Uh, and remaining land ownership isn't going to change, or trails isn't going to change. No, that's correct. Um, does the CONCOM have to review those changes? I didn't think so. Okay. It's not, it's not 21 through 24, no. And there are uh, historical features to be discussed with those units? No. None. Uh, God. Um, Okay, so landscaping would be the issue that is in front of us um, to talk about um, for units 21, 22, 23, and 24. So this is your moment, Lori. And if somebody could give her a spot to sit there and explain her um, comments, that would be helpful. And I was the first um, resident of Mass Woods. 
Okay. So I'm here tonight, there's nobody who wants those dirt mounds gone more than me, I can assure you of that. But I'm here tonight to ask for your help. We, we have, there's some major issues going on in our complex that we need to have addressed. And despite countless emails, phone calls to Chuck and inspectional services, who's been wonderful, helpful, and to uh, Habitec, um, we're still dealing with these issues. Most of us moved to this condo so we wouldn't have to deal with landscaping or deal with some of the general stuff that you deal with in your house. We pay a monthly fee for that to be taken care of. But many of us still do the maintenance ourselves. Um, two neighbors just this week have planted seed in around their yards and their units. I personally every year go out and trim all my own landscaping because as you'll notice it's growing up the infrastructure. So, so two issues, landscaping that exists and landscaping that you would like to see in place when these units go in. Yeah, and I can be more specific. So I'll start with the gutters because to be honest, it, it's, it's a deeper problem than just landscaping. So if you go to slide two, um, I've tried to give you some visuals of what the sides of our units look like. From sprinklers fully exposed to the line buildup on the side of the house. Um, water's washing away from the dirt in the lawn on the sides of our house and it's in some cases it's leaving very large holes all of our units have gutter issues they have attempted to fix they've attempted to they clean them um, it's still not fixed it there's still a problem so that's so then that's slide two if you go to slide three I have personally five cracks in my foundation Last year, the condo did pay for one of the cracks because it was leaking water. The condo association will pay for a crack if it's le leaking water. But the one that you notice on slide three, because that one wasn't leaking water, it was six feet long, cracking, chipping, and getting worse. I chose to pay for that myself. I had two separate experts come into my unit, and I showed them the drainage problems and my cracks. They both agreed that they were most likely caused or contributed by the drainage issue I was having. From the day I moved in, I have complained from my very first punch list that the gutter, drainage, and lack of landscaping, um, but until there was water in my basement, there was no action from Habitec other than just cleaning the gutters. Yes, the debris does help the draining to fix, but it needs to be fixed properly. Slide four shows how Habitec has addressed our concerns. They continue to throw dirt, rocks, and finally I have some sod, but these are all short-term band-aids and they're not addressing the root of the problem, which is the construction of the gutters. Many of my neighbors, a couple of them have already complained that they have cracks in their foundation and we do realize sometimes your house just settles but they're going to get worse, and it's our problem to fix when they're gone in two years. Drainage in general is a problem, so if you go to slide five, the pictures are really hard to see, but I'm trying to show how on the sides and back of our houses, we need those, through every picture in there, those trenches are several inches deep. On the side of my house, I have no grass and I have a major ditch. I do not let my kids run down there. They're going to twist, those young kids running, they're going to twist an ankle. There's no, I have no grass, dirt, or it's mud. It's, you need someone to come out. It's a retaining wall, it's sod. I'm not sure, I'm not the expert, but what's there is unacceptable. There are several units, um, North Pond, some of those pictures are from North Pond, so when you do your site tour, please go around. I would love for you to go around behind the buildings and look at some of the concerns that I'm bringing up here. I wasn't going to bring up the lack of landscaping, um, which you'll see on the last slide, but after speaking to my neighbor this week who had to pay for his own exterminator to come out, and I personally have dealt with ants and spiders, which you just attribute to new construction, it's very possible that it's also due to that we've got landscaping that's crawling up the sides of our house that, as anyone knows, you should not have landscaping touching your house. And that also, because of the drainage of the landscaping, could be contributing to our foundational issues. 
So I stand here tonight to ask for your help with these issues to be addressed permanently, not these short term. Those units in front of me, I, I realize that Habitech just says they will do landscaping. They haven't proven in three years that they've been able to do proper landscaping. Okay. There, we're done with the shortcuts and I appreciate your time tonight and thank you very much. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, okay, so I think that um, the landscaping plan will be important and also sort of um, maintenance and restorative um, concerns is a good t it's a good time to look at that as well. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you here. We have a couple of different things going on. We're we're very much paying attention to um, your concerns, and we're kind of I'm I'm making the decision to wrap it into this process, um, but we have to stay true to, to the process too. So I appreciate it. Um, I don't think that this board is gonna um, sort of mandate uh, ultimatums and things like that. We're gonna choose to work with the developer. Um, to try and address the concerns going forward, but I understand I appreciate that you brought them forward and that they're frustrating If I may through the chair. Yep uh, so um, Miss Hurley you you came in before us before and I remember that was um, I think in the other room I think that was Heidi Edwards. Okay. Had, um, yeah, you actually have to be over here by the mics. I'm sorry yeah, that was Heidi Edwards. She was the unit that's next to I think they wanted to change the one of the units at the end of the right. And did she have the same or similar problems? Um, no. Are, are there other neighbors here that? Go ahead, Steve. Put down the spot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm here to uh, You have to come right up for the mic, sir, okay. so that you can be heard by the folks at home. Yeah. I'm a new resident there. It's less than a, the end of this month will be a year for us. Uh, I mean, I've seen the, the issues. Our house so far, we have not had the breaks in the concrete, whatever. However, the gutters were initially right up front. They did in install wider gutters. It seems to uh, be working. They just, this week, we're cleaning them out because mine was starting to overflow again. Cleaning it out will help. We'll see it again tonight, so that should be okay. But some of the issues that Laurie was talking about in terms of the general landscaping where the, this, uh, Topsoil has been washed away. It's down to like you know gravel, rough stuff. A lot of spots. I mean, there are a fair number of areas where that is still present. You know, going on. I know they've been bringing in you know landscapers as each of these new units, and they did, for example, our area touch it up, uh, and they did reseed it this year. Still waiting for some of that grass to come up. Sure. But uh, I mean, I'm relatively new there. I haven't been here as long as Laurie has. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, um, so uh, any questions or comments? I think that um, I haven't seen comments from, from our scientists yet, but the, this shows that we should probably look at stormwater management again because it's causing rots and, and not operating as it should, so we should probably highlight that as something that the scientists should review. The beta should review? Yeah. We take a look at um, Through the chair. Yes. I would just imagine, like being uh, right near Maspinock, that there is just ground, like uh, the water level is high, and I'd imagine there's water in people's basements requiring some pumps. Um, and I don't know how that should be factored in here in any type of design considerations, project considerations. Um, like when you see cracks in a foundation, it's obviously there's, there's a certain aspect of water um, and just the groundwater and any, um, I don't think there it's necessarily relevant to, too relevant to 21-24 if it's really interior modifications, but it definitely would be relevant to 5 West. Uh, okay. Um, I, I definitely think that it's worth, we're going to have a site walk anyway, it's definitely worth having um, Beta and John take a look at it. I don't know if you'll go on the site walk with us or go out with. So they have not submitted stormwater 
information based on No, the I know. Well, they plan. did, they had, it was part of the permit. So this is, would be a review of the functionality, right? Yes, I guess. Or That's. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. At least just, you know, find out if it's a big or a small um, concern or no concern. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. I'm looking for all my planning board members. They're all nodding their heads. Um, and we're going to go out on the 22nd and see it um, ourselves. Um, does the board feel comfortable deciding um, whether the 21, 22, 23, and 24 are major or minor decisions? I, I'm comfortable with it being a minor change. I'm comfortable with it being minor as well. Minor. So do we need a vote on that? Uh, yeah, I think that would be helpful. Okay. Just if you want me to read the criteria for me. Sure. That might be yeah, perfect. So a minor project is defined as an increase in gross floor area of not more than 5,000 square feet or the addition of rooftop, rooftop HVAC mechanical equipment substantially visible from a public or private street or public place requiring a building permit or construction enlargement or alteration of a parking area containing five or more parking spaces that is a minor project we haven't exceeded any of that right right um we also have a question from a resident um that was submitted by email about um heights and I assume that all of the uh, construction heights are within the special permit guidelines. Should be, yes. um, and we wouldn't do anything. We wouldn't do anything here to decide to exceed those. We haven't changed the heights right. in these it, with these new duplexes. We haven't changed the, the height of uh, the uh, from the original buildings. Okay. One thing that would be useful uh, to the chair is in the past when you, I think it was the Lisa model, uh, when there were changes, you had the before and after pictures and they were colored and um, to show what the changes were in relation to the, what the original was. Uh, and here, it's just, we have it in black and white. And it's, not, it's not the same clarity as what the changes are. I think that they were, no, uh, they're online in color, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah they're in our packet, they yeah. I slipped on this. Yeah. Um, they're in the packet on the iPad. Um, so I will entertain a motion to uh, consider the changes for 21, 22, 23, and 24 as minor changes to the special permit. So moved. Second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, are people prepared to take a vote or have more questions on 21, 22, 23, 24? I know we're going to go see them. What vote would we take then? Well, it, to approve the changes. It seems we've just decided they're minor changes, but do we have additional questions on the, the, those changes specifically? I guess I have questions about the drainage, and this looks like the drainage wasn't done quite right around the houses of the other units, so I'd like to make sure that the drainage is done correctly on the new units. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I'd rather wait to vote. Yeah. I, I have yeah, and I have some questions about the water table, the water table heights, and, and um, how the basements are reacting to that. Yep. And so um, I, I'd like to have some more information from the engineer. Okay. So just um, asking for clarity, um, not necessarily with the design. If the engineer comes back with feedback on the drainage, we'll be able to, but we don't have questions on the, the design. Right. Okay. Anybody else? Previously, I thought the design was more offset, but if this is the change to these side by side, more side by side, is market driven or consumer uh, driven? Uh, I think this, this offset looked better conceptually, mm -hmm. but it's been through the design review and board, and this is what your business plan is, and that seems okay. 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 So. I have one question. As far as the design is concerned and as far as the neighbors are concerned, is the new design any more um, imposing on the neighbors other than being able to be screened because you're popping out into the, the you know, diagonal space, which is really cool, by the way. I like how you've done that. 
but the question is, does it use the law? It increases the usage of the lot, correct? It's all still within the building envelope. Okay. Uh, there's, there's a different shape, but it's within the building, the, the setbacks <coughs> that um, uh, exist for the, the buildings throughout the units, throughout the development. Okay, but but wasn't there some that um, maybe we can pull that up again? Some that some of the jogs that protruded over those lines. No. No, they all they're all set back in. It meet the, okay. Both of the units both before and after meet the setback, but you know we added the sunroom here and in Decker's and large, but again they're all within the allowed buildable area. Okay, that's what I wanted to make okay. confirm. All right, okay. I think so, that we oh okay. I, th I think we have a more detailed discussion coming up on the old house um, and the new one going in, um, and it makes sense to do that after we s see the property. Mm -hmm. um, I think, from what I'm hearing and what I'm, I'm thinking, um, we need to know that the water is being managed on site the way that it was intended to be and is uh, is under control, um, and it would we need to see a landscaping plan um, before we are ready to uh, approve these but it doesn't sound like there are major issues with 21 22 23 and 24 on their own um, I wonder before we move on to another topic um, if anybody has any big I you know big concerns about number five that they can be working on um, when we continue the hearing Is it, that we know of so I drive by that all the time and it's been a vacant decrep it's been a decaying structure for a long time dirt mounds um, I just like having a septic system on property there I just don't know how I have concerns about the viability of a septic system on property because it's just so wet like literally Maspinock can get to water levels right close to the property um, that would be one of my main concerns so that would be uh, part of the Board of Health process but I agree with the concern, and so we're going to want to we're going to want to know how that process is going um, with our other boards and yeah, Concom we'll, we'll obviously. We'll apply for the Title Five and find out. Yeah, yeah and Concom, I'd get on their schedule as well. Um, Pardon? Concom. Yes. Oh, we'll we'll apply for both. Yep. Um, any anybody else with anything in particular before we? Um, <laughs> move to a few other agenda items that we're going to squeeze in here. I just wanted to clarify that the landscaping plan will address the concerns of the, some other window placement be changing and maybe looking onto the neighbor's property. Not on 5 say, say that again for me just so I can hear you. Sorry. The landscaping and screening, the, the landscaping plan will address some of the concerns about windows looking over to neighboring yeah. properties. We're going to provide a screening plan um, that uh, will be uh, designed to screen the rear of these four units from the units across the street. Okay. And that, I'm sorry, uh, yep. just following on what Amy yep. was saying, um, one of the abutters um, was talking about having discussed with you um, the installation of additional screening with their abutting property. So from the, in general for the development, not for these new units, but in general for the development, rhododendrons and so on. The Mosher's on Mosher's. West Elm Street. Oh, was there a letter? Did you get Did you get this email? I don't know when it came in. It came in today. Today. Oh, okay. 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 So let me read it into the record because it's short. It's from John Mosher. Um, I have read. Uh, maybe I need my glasses. Actually, here we go. I have read the documents regarding Maspinock Woods. I am not opposed to the minimal alterations to the floor plans. However, I did not see building heights listed. There is a scale, but no dimensions. Noting the proximity of these units to my house, I am interested in the height. I have also I also have heard concerns from a resident regarding outstanding issues of completion and warranty within the development. I think we probably just heard about those. One of the concerns which I share is is lack of parking. Um, we didn't talk about that. If there is limited on-site parking for guests, they may look to park in the street. In this location, that would be particularly unsafe. Um, I have had conversations with the site manager to improve the screening between our properties. We had agreed last fall that rhododendrons would be suitable. I'm hoping to see those get planted in the near future. I would be interested in the construction schedule as well. <laughs> 
just throwing this in, in at the end. It would be great if we could enjoy the summer with minimal noise as this project has been ongoing for years. But that's the, that's the entirety of the email, just so you have it and the public has it. Um, so if there were conversations with um, an abutting property owner and agreements made for screening, um, that would be pertinent to make sure we address it this day this time too. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. And can I get a copy of that? Yeah, yeah. yep, yeah. totally. It'll all be part of the record that's accessible online, but you can certainly, yeah, yep, absolutely. From the viewpoint of the parking, I mean, nothing is changing from the viewpoint of the original yep. design. Each unit has their two parking yep. spaces on it. It's no different than a, than a roadway subdivision. Yep. Um, I, I have a chance to agree with you that, you know, that isn't going to change, but I just, Certainly going to read in his comments. It wouldn't be appropriate to do, to uh, to extend parking out onto West Elm there for sure. What address is John Mosier at? So when I go on the site, does do we have that? I think he said, didn't he? I just gave my email away. Uh -huh. It's on the it's on the he's on the overall site plan. He's he's the right, the right to the left, uh, immediately to the left of the entrance driveway too. Is it up there? The is is it, I think that's the only house in and between. Number three, okay. number three West Helm. I'm not sure. Three, maybe five. Three. No, five is the new one or the one. That oh, that's right, the one we're talking about. Yeah, five it's is probably. Yeah. Um, I saw his name on the plan. Yeah. It's because it's only left. It's, it's right here. Yeah. That's the one <laughs> right next door. Yeah. yeah. Behind. So it, it um, a, not a terrible idea to connect with him as well. You have, you know, limited exposure there, um, but to make sure that if you're doing it, you might as well do it in a way that keeps people as um, supportive as possible. Yeah, I will. Okay. Um, okay. Um, when would be our next available time to continue the hearing? Likely July 22nd. All right, and the only thing on there was what we just put on there? 76. July 22nd. So um, why don't we put it on at 8.30? What date was that? July 22nd. Sidewalk, so, June 22nd. Yep. That's July 22nd. And uh, then we'd hope for an update. Certainly yeah, a landscaping plan, but hope for an update. Yeah, that'll talk to Board of Health. We'll talk to the yep. fire department as yep. well. Yep, perfect. Um, landscape plan. Perfect. So I'll entertain a motion to continue this public hearing to July 22nd at 8.30. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 There's discussion, sorry. I'm just going to add that John Musher is 13 West Elm. If that you almost 13. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Do you need to Oh, are there two? Yes. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I'll entertain a motion to do um, the, the um, site plan for the dwelling at 5 West Elm, the special permit associated with 5 West Elm. Um, I'll consider that we just did the... <laughs> Let me clarify. How about we do that? How about we revote that? Um, we will continue the hearing for the proposed site plan and unit changes for the units 21, 22, 23, 24, and the special permit for the unit, the dwelling unit at 5 West Elm to be July 22nd starting at 8.30. So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Sorry about the confusion. Thank you. And we will also need to request a continuation of the decision. Yes. And when would that best be, Kobe? Uh, I think John? we've been going a week after the hearing. So yeah. Should, uh, July 29th. So an extension to July 29th? Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Um, do you want to walk us through some of the... Um, I'm just thinking about the, um, the A and R's if they are quick. Yes, and also because they need to have a decision by tomorrow. Oh. So they can't. So let's do that. Oh. Okay. okay. Well, Twenty-seven Missouri. We'll just start in our, in order. Joe, did you want to come up and present? There's just two, right? 
Hi, Joe. Evening. Joe Marquardt here on behalf of Carol Pontramoli. She's the, uh, the uh, trustee for the uh, Bumps Realty Trust. Uh, that is the, uh, she is trustee for the land of her late parents uh, at uh, 27 Reserve Street, down the end of Reserve Street. The family wants to deed the home, number 27, the homestead, to Carol's daughter, Ashley. Mm -hmm. uh, she's going to take what is what B on the plan in front of you, but the uh, Realty, Trust, Realty Trust is going to retain uh, parcel A. Okay. Are there any issues or concerns? Uh, no, on this one. Were no issues that were significant. Um, parcel A is designated a non buildable mm -hmm. lot, so that would satisfy the zone. Uh, and I believe parcel B complies with all the zone. So that, uh, Any questions? Concerns? Just for clarity, I drove down there, but I couldn't. What makes it an un unbuildable lot? Insufficient frontage, yeah. Yeah. an insufficient area. And, and plot area. So for ARs, you need to have. Sufficient frontage and lot area for it to be done. You don't have to comply with any other zoning because the endorsement doesn't specify that compliance with other zoning is needed. But um, if it doesn't comply with one or both, it's essentially a non buildable lot and it has to be marked on the plan. Mm. I'm not sure why they're making a change because there's there's it's a, there's no gain in they could build one bigger house. They could. There's an existing home at 27. Right. Ashley would take that. The family would like to retain the land that is not necessary for that building lot. 27 has area and frontage in excess of the minimum. Certainly meets all the requirements. We didn't want an issue with Town Hall, someone trying uh, to give the impression that you could build something on parcel A. So we designated that as a non-buildable lot. It's simply land that the family wants to retain. Any other questions or concerns? I'll entertain a motion to approve the A&R at 27 Missouri Street. So moved. Is there a second? second. All those in, oh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Okay, Great. all set. Thank you very much. Yep. And then we're gonna do 134, 138. Okay. Take us away. Okay, 134, 138 Old Town Road. Um, several lots, eight lots from a plan from the 1930s. Owned um, two families, two separate owners, uh, own the parcels together. Number 138, the Demings would like to sell their home and relocate out of state. So mm -hmm. we need to separate the two, uh, two uh, Ownerships. Two ownerships, excuse me, thank you, on to two separate lots. The Andersons will retain 134 where they live. Um, the Demings will sell to a third party. In order to do that, we need to create a lot around the existing home. They are um, odd in shape, small in size, but because the parcels were owned in common ownership, the lots were in existence prior to the adoption of the subdivision control law, it's not a, considered a subdivision to separate those two out. So we have attempted to create lot one that the Andersons will retain, lot two that the Demings will sell. They're approximately the same size and shape, but they, uh, they do not constitute a subdivision. So we need to okay. separate those through the ANR process. And they don't necessarily meet the guidelines for frontage and lot size? For, correct, because right. the lots were created prior to the adoption of the subdiv subdivision control law and zoning here in town of, the town of Hopkinton. So interesting that they're co-owned. First time in 30-something years I've ever come across this. All right, so it's not just new for me. Exceedingly rare. <laughs> Exceedingly rare, okay. Vacation homes. Questions? <laughs> yes, um, so the new buyer could technically pretty much knock down most of that house and build a new house if they choose to yes they'll have issues with construction they'll have to meet certain setback requirements I imagine the Board of Appeals would have to weigh in on a couple of those topics yeah. so but conceivably yes they could <clears throat> anybody else mm -hmm. 
Did you have any issues be beyond what we saw in our packet, John? I mean, just you explaining it to us. Okay. No, so yeah, the uh, attorney. Did the research. <laughs> did you, Tom, did you have anything you wanted to add or? No, Joe did a great job. Okay, okay. Um, okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve the ANR for 134-138 Old Town Road. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Are there any, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Great set. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for your time. All right. Yes. So we'll just need to get these endorsed. Signed before, before, before we leave. Do you want to do it now, now. or at the or end of the meeting? How many do you need, Kobe? Pardon? How many people do you need to sign it to? Do you guys want to just go over and sign up? That would be awesome. Um, can we approve minutes while they're signing? No, because we. Because what? We haven't reviewed them. Because we just got them. No, uh, we got minutes oh, from no, April 22nd and May 6th. Sorry. Yep. No. That's okay. I have a minor modification um, that I'll get to Kobe for or 22nd. For the 22nd. Okay. Um, is uh, does anybody w willing to move the minutes with a minor adjustment from Deb to Kobe on April 22nd? So moved. A second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll entertain a motion on the minutes from May 6th. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, another awesome job, Kobe. Thank you very much. We'll see how Patrick measures up. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure to the new no guy. Pressure. Sure, no pressure. No <laughs> pressure. So we do have those minutes, um, and you must have sent them to everybody okay. and, and CC them. Too. Perfect. All right. And we had the May second minutes done. I just they got lost in the shuffle, so they're <laughs> ah. they'll, be the, they'll be in the next hearing. Yeah, perfect. Yep, perfect. So we'll have another couple of sets. Okay. Um, how about the discussion, I want Deb to be able to listen to this, we have a few minutes, um, the discussion on the mission statement that we got hot off the presses. <laughs> Is this a new timeline too, Amy? Here we go. That book yeah, the a little bit. timeline. Okay. Yes. Okay. Did that come to us and I just missed it? I'm sorry, just, just no. today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Flurry of activity today. Flurry of activity today. It's all right. I like it. Flurry of paper. Um, okay. I'm gonna just take a minute to read the mission statement. I don't know if other people have already done that. So I can provide a little bit of yeah. commentary on this. Um, and uh, Rob, Mary, and I all, all had a, a chance to take a look at this. We had some a awesome. little bit of back and forth today. Um, <laughs> I, 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 Fair enough. I think the, the, the big debate for us was really how detailed to get. Um, and what we tried to do here was break out you know, the mission statement and something that was a little bit more mission centric um, and we wanted to capture that first sentence is actually from the, the vision 2015 mm -hmm. document uh, we just thought it it, um, it captures sort of the spirit of what we want to be in a fairly general sense um, and then what happened was is that 
some of the, I think within the deliverables, just as we sort of blurred everything together, we felt there were some objectives, some, some more specific objectives that were worth pulling out that kind of speak to the, the aim of, of what we were doing. And then the deliverables were really those specific documents, so to say, that would be an output um, of, the, um, of the process. So this is, you know, in our eyes, very much still in, in draft form. Um, and I apologize to not get it to people sooner. I know people are reading it um, for the first time now. But what we'd like to do is um, get your reaction to it, um, see if there is anything substantial or major that's, that's, that's missing, uh, if there's anything in it that you don't think belongs, and then um, we can go ahead and um, finalize it for the, the next meeting. That's our, our goal. I would, um, that there's nothing wrong with it. It's a great start. Thank you. Um, I would like to add preservation of uh, existing natural resources to the mission statement, if everybody else is amenable, or at least contemplate that. Um, and then it may be captured in this um, create a plan of action that includes cadence and deliverables. I love the little military reference. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> uh, for ongoing residential growth assessment. Um, my sort of thinking out loud, big box thinking, I would like to make sure that we have some sort of actionable process for the major stakeholders in town to um, come together and assess the information, the impacts, Excellent. and, uh, you know, the go forward planning. Um, so I think, uh, you know, all the major players are very invested. We just don't really have the structure to... Um, to have the ongoing conversation over time. So, so maybe what we can do is we can add that as a sub bullet or something like yeah, that. Yeah, just, just and and it's funny because I mean, Rob had some comments in it that were effectively you know resource requirements and 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 um, and, and, some, and, and support from from town staff and um, I'm, I'm it seems 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 reasonable. I mean, I mean to, to me the key theme there is that it's a, a you know multifaceted committee yep. of stakeholders yep. that are a part of the ongoing process. Yeah, I, I guess when I envision it, right, this is a major effort, which is awesome, right? It'll be a small band of dedicated volunteers, um, but that there's some go forward process that's sustainable, actionable, and um, design across. So we would make that a number five some of the deliverables. I mean, I definitely think that for me, I, I'm just saying for me, for me, having something that is um, that is sustainable over time is uh, really important. Yeah, so so I would just push back. I, I think that does roll up for me under number four. And I'd be hesitant to totally put it as a, as a fifth one just because, I mean, the, it's a deliverable. So a, a plan of action, I think, should incorporate those stakeholders and be involved. But yeah, that, I'm, I'm totally my, fine as long as there's, I, I mean, I, I would advocate for, in one voice, I would advocate for um, some contemplation of uh, the process that we think today um, is workable with the committees we have today, knowing that, you know, in 10 years or five years, you know, elections happen and boards change and people might have a different idea of the best process. But like the financial working group that started, you know, eventually kind of shifted and disappeared. Then if we were to add it to number four, what I would take out would be the specific residential and I would say the growth assessment um, in, um, that receives support from major stakeholders over time. So, so it's a good point. We talked about that as well. Um, and where I got hung up on it is that growth of growth of what? So with residential growth, that's something that we can measure via dwelling units. Um, if we're just talking about growth in the town, that kind of becomes more, I, I don't know how to, this how to is, define but this that. Is a, it would be, well, then it would be defined as residential and um, commercial because one of the targets that I think we want to point at is the commercial development and how we can better bring in um, commercial 
people and businesses um, to promote a healthy environment and how and how we can do that to to sort of match our residential growth as well. So would that be something that could be expanded upon in item three? So you, in item three, you contemplate identifying and prioritizing parcels and zones with the highest potential for residential growth um, and recommend optimal land uses and practices for each of them. Um, but there, there could certainly be um, necessary discussion about land uses that aren't necessarily on those big, um, scary, yeah. <laughs> lovely open spaces. Yeah, so they can be, um, you know, and we, industrial A and yeah, industrial B. Yeah, we might B. contemplate ways, like one of the things, and I have no idea if it comes out of the meeting, but you know, because I get this opportunity to say it, um, you know, it might be the time to actually designate um, some funds to uh, get a professional to help us populate the industrial sector with you know, more commercial um, possibilities. And it might be the time to talk about somebody who helps us really vitalize downtown. I, I, it's just something that could easily be part of the discussion. So, so I, I'm just, go ahead, Amy. Well, mine is another thing I wanted to add, but do you want to wrap up this part? I, I, I guess I, I just, and I, I, I was torn on this. I, I'm curious to hear thoughts from other people on, on whether this should be focused specifically on, I mean, the hot button is really residential mm -hmm. growth. Um, and in so many ways, I, I wanted to include commercial as well, but then I, I just was worried it was getting bigger and less defined. And now we get into more financial models and tax, I mean, just, I, I was worried that it was, it was creeping a little bit potentially beyond I think what we we're trying to do and I, I, I could go either way I, I don't yeah, I, I, I agree with Deb and I, I think that there's a, a balance there but I, I just curious to hear from from other people if I wanted to add something if we can or think about adding something about t um, getting um, by feedback from the public about where, where they want the town to go particular I guess particularly at commercial what do they want the downtown to become do they want to be like Hudson as their sort of revitalization or some other towns have done downtown revitalization. Make sure we have that buy-in before we try to bring businesses in that turns out people don't want that type of business. Or right. right. Um, so, I, so I guess it's some kind of, something vague, I guess, about it, uh, public input is part of the deliverable. Well, de I think, I so I definitely think we, in, as part of our process, we contemplated intentional mm -hmm. outreach and public input, right? I just don't see it listed. I agree. But, but I would argue that's not a deliverable. No, it's that's not a deliverable. A, it's a tool or a process a, yes. that the, the team itself would go through. Um, and if if we want to, you know, it's 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 really a question, as Gary said, of how specific are we trying to get here? Are we, are we dictating everything that they're going to do? And I don't think we are. Um, I think that you know part of it, you know. When we're, when we're charging them with this mission is coming back and checking in with planning board every once in a while, tell us about your progress. And, um, you know, it doesn't all have to be written down here. But speaking to the, um, the other issue of the commercial versus residential, I would say residential is most of the growth concern, but we need to express the financial um, assessment and so on and forecast. At, about the balance and about the difference in the tax base versus cost, uh, which we had in an earlier iteration and we talked about a little bit. And I don't think you, by simplifying this outline, you know, in the in the last draft, um, I don't think you meant to eliminate that entirely. I think, but I think that's it's the balance between the residential and commercial growth that might need to be addressed. Then, yeah. I think pretty strongly that from a land use perspective, we have to contemplate it, but I totally understand your point. It's why this is so hard to mm -hmm. yeah. capture. I, I guess what I'm concerned about is trying to, I mean, it, pretty soon this becomes all, it becomes master plan, it becomes mm -hmm. selectman jurisdiction, it becomes, I mean, it, I just worry a little bit that it becomes and so that's what I was going to say is that if, if maybe if there's specific areas that uh, and maybe whether it be the large tracks or land, I mean if there's ways that are that we can build that commercial growth consideration in maybe so maybe this I'm just throwing this out as an idea so obviously we we're very concerned about those potentially developable large tracts of land 
Um, but we also have a focused interest on commercial development in the areas that are currently set aside for commercial development. And I think we also have um, a well-established pattern of interest from the residents, though I think it's a very important point that we don't necessarily know um, anymore what that specifically is. If we ever did, um, that residents would like the downtown to be more of a destination um, for some commercial um, shopping, eating, enjoyment. So, so what if we do this? Um, I'm wondering if it's worth adding a fifth deliverable that somehow incorporates the desire to expand our commercial base. And I, I'm a little hesitant on the downtown piece because we also had a downtown revitalization committee. I mean, there's been a lot of work that's gone into that, and I just don't want to be repeating my, things my that have already been done. Just, but my concern is that we have this huge track that our forefathers um, gave us on on South Street, and it's just so beneficial. And and how and it's just, I just think it's a, a <coughs> diamond in the rough, and we just need to figure out like. Like um, you, like you said, Muriel, how how can we better utilize it, and, and do we need resources to help us figure that out? Um, so, so so what if we had a going back to we had a, a fifth bullet of um, recommendations, something to the effect of recommendations um, on on how to <coughs> increase or grow the commercial base within town, something mm -hmm. something to that effect. Yes, you were going to say something. I'm nodding along. I th it is, so this uh, this was t this was today's discussion is the ba the balance between doing, being too prescriptive and taking kind of the power out of any committee and basically saying do the mm -hmm. X Y Z mm -hmm. and empowering a committee by trying to be broad enough that they have leeway to to do certain things. Um, a draft, like Mary said, pr prior draft was much more prescriptive, um, and it had some like all the things you're talking about right now yeah. were incorporated yeah. and we kind of backed away. Um, I, I could go either way because um, I want the, wh whoever's working on this project to be empowered, but I also want right. an output. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I totally, I'm totally nodding along and this is the grand challenge. I also want to say that I um, really uh, strongly agree with Amy that the best products we've ever gotten and the most workable products that we've ever gotten and the most buy-in we've ever gotten is when we are very intentional about um, community input. And um, for me, this whole effort really hinges on um, finding out what people would like us to be focusing on in particular. Um, so, I mean, I just, I don't necessarily know that um, it has to be the mission that there's community engagement, but there is certainly an expectation that there's going to be some very intentional community engagement. Um, I I feel pretty strongly that. Did you? Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. So two things that I wanted to uh, just bring up is I don't want to add more work to probably my plate, but. Um, <laughs> There may be a deliverable that comes out of the public input, and it's just kind of a memo or summary of what the public has actually said so that it's in writing in front of the, the committee. Um, and maybe that's one of the first things that gets done so that the, the committee kind of has a direction. Uh, the second one is it's kind of part of um, number three, where it's the forecast model. But one way to really put the fear of God in people is to do a build-out analysis. Um, and for those of you who might not know what a build-out analysis is, is either the planning department or we hire a consultant basically looks at the land as it's zoned now, the parcels as it's set up now, and determines what could be built without a special permit as it stands. And it's usually a lot higher than people think. And so that's basically growth that you cannot control. It's done by right, um, and it's a good idea of what can be done based on the zoning that's in place and what's still available land. Uh, it is a significant undertaking, but it may be uh, beneficial as a discussion point and kind of a, a picture moving forward. Mm -hmm. 
John, so when you say it's a significant undertaking, what kind of time frame and how does one go about planning that? So uh, it could be done by a consultant. Um, I don't know the scope at this point. I'd have to look into it. Um, but it would be several thousand, several ten, ten thousands maybe, um, depending on how detailed you want to get. Uh, because you're really looking at every parcel and you're looking at the zoning and you're looking at development schemes on those parcels. Um, is obviously, it, sorry, go ahead. Just go back to the cost. Is it tens of thousands or <laughs> hundred thousand? Because I mean, I, I look at what it costs us to assess the roof on a school and that seems to cost $150,000. Yeah, so I, I don't understand how this would be done. For how detailed it can be because you're looking, if you're doing it at a consultant rate, you're looking at billable time and they're going to be doing a lot of different analysis and stuff like that. So it's really hard to tell how much it's exactly going to cost. I can try and find RFPs for that type of thing uh, to see what other towns have requested. Um, but it can be, I mean, you can do pretty generic and it wouldn't take that long uh, and it could be cheaper. And that's kind of just whittling down. And it kind of builds into the pr uh, priority parcels where based on the zoning, you're taking out all the parcels that don't conform to zoning as it is. So those are gone, they can't be developed. And then trying to figure out, you know, ones that might not be zoned for residential in a way that would add units, those can be taken out. And, that, and you can do a general one like that, or you can do really in depth and look at individual parcels. The larger parcels, basically, how they can develop them with multiple units, if possible, uh, through the A&R process, right? Like See, that. and I would, uh, to me, that, that, I think that's what we were trying to get at with Deliverable number two is the forecast model of dwelling unit growth, and I guess maybe anticipated growth isn't necessarily build out, but it's probably worth establishing that those those bookends. Yeah. So say, I think build out is worst case scenario. Yeah. And how I read this is predictable. That's fair. So, but having so, that up, uh, oh, uh, having that upper limit would be extremely valuable. I I think it would any point to make would be. Well, this is predicted, like any sensitivity analysis you do, yeah. like minimum, maximum, predicted, mm -hmm. it's just what, so I, I'm 100% for it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not to be a dip downer, we don't have money allocated for this effort. Mm -hmm. um, so it is something to think about um, uh, where we might find our resources or how we might find our resources if we're gonna do that. So it's worth knowing what it costs or what it might cost. Um, and then um, there's grants, a, a grant perhaps that yeah, have. and that uh, yes, right? I not, I not along enthusiastically yes, um, but that is a t that's a time thing as well. Um, so just um, to sort of you know throw it all into the pot to stir around and see um, because we we don't have money set aside for this specifically. We may have money. Do we have any money in the planning board budget this year? Or I have to look. Yeah, we, you know, and we, I mean, there may be places where we could find some money. I don't know about a big effort, and it, but that would be a thing we had to solve. But knowing what it would cost, we could at least ask for money in a yep. future year. Yeah, yeah. Yep. There's also the option of MAPC helping out. I don't know okay. how much yep. they can do it, but the cost differential. So I feel like we're amenable. If you're willing to do the research, if that's those are you know possible avenues, that would be really helpful. So, so I'm kind of hearing three things that people want to include in this. One is something around um, public public input, incorporating that in, in some way. Um, the second is uh, something around um, how we incorporate major stakeholders into the process. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third is something around, um, you know, um, advocating or, um, I mean, not advocating, it's not the right word, but, um, recommending or? recommendations around how we can balance our residential growth with um, with with commercial growth. So I'm thinking maybe a deliverable of a, just a report of a summary of the public input received by the committee. That something we'll deliver at the end would be a summary of the various public input we'll do. Would that? It's a pretty easy thing yeah. to deliver, yeah. and, and people will know they've been heard and it's documented. Yep. Okay. Seems fair. Anyway. I definitely think that uh, well, I'm a huge, huge proponent of public input and um, and taking notes and and remember what people said so that they know that people are actually 
and just keep it yeah. vague as report. That way we can decide, is it a survey, is it a forum, is it? Yeah. We'll decide that later. I haven't figured out how to incorporate that into the actual set paragraph, sentence above for the mission statement, but somehow it'd be really nice if we could include that as well. Um, a well-educated, healthy community. Um, I don't know, mission and project and examine. We're going to let the, we're gonna let the, the yeah. geniuses that yeah. got the, Yeah, got somehow incorporate <laughs> that public insinuation, well, that it, public idea incorporated. Does it work for you, Deb, if we add it as a deliverable, a summary of public public? I'd just uh, like to input? see it in the statement, actual, as a part of the goal. As a part as of part the mission of a, statement, you mean? As part of the mission statement, to actually see it in the wording somehow. Um, I, I would have to look And is that where you want the natural resources to, Muriel? Yeah, well, yes. so the last Sorry. statement was standards in education, public safety, health, and recreation. I thought preservation of natural resources was, um, it's, it's, um, was a, a yeah. good add in that line, to be honest. Yeah, so I'm gonna, yeah. It's yeah, at just, the beginning, you know, and I thought it... I'm just going to push back a little bit, because five is a lot. Four is a lot for me. I always like rule of three. So or I'm wondering, down here. no, even for, for these, these up here. Yeah, well, I'm going to push right back again. So <laughs> I just think that this community I think honestly it, prizes but, but its natural resources. We're a community I, of lakes and trees. I, I, I don't deny that, but the purpose of a mission is to guide the process. And if we give them five different things we're trying to preserve, then that it gets harder to balance that out. Well, which one would you get rid of rather than pull up for natural resources? <laughs> so I, I think that's why I think that's why. I've, Previous iteration, pre previous version of this type of attempt, use the use the term rural character to summarize five, yes. six, seven, eight. Yes, to, to, to wrap it all in. Yes. Um, Thank you. Yes. There are other plans uh, in town that might deal with things that you guys want to include in this. The open mm -hmm. space plan being yes. one of them. Mm -hmm. and I think that's going to be up for renewal in like a year or two. So that may be something that could take that natural resources part off of this committee's plate and there can be a liaison from the growth committee to the open space update plan committee or cut some back and forth on that if you're looking for something to do. And, and, and again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm okay including it. I just want to make sure that. Yeah, I get you. I do. That we're being as targeted as we can here. Yeah. And, um, if I may point out, natural resources is mentioned in the first it line. Is. So, um, I, so get, I would I would go ahead and get rid of recreation and put in preservation of natural resources if I had to pick. Okay. I, I just I, I really believe that, and maybe I'm wrong, but I really believe that this town is focused on not recreation as well, but um, it is a part of the balance of our growth and our tax base and our health and safety and. Okay. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah, I'm fine with that. I have one. I have, I have kind of a place to put um, the townwide. I think the mission of the project is to have a townwide examination of growth trends and development. Would something like that work? Ta townwide examination. Um, yeah, so, so, something to that matter. Maybe there's somebody who can um, wordsmith that a little bit better, but. I, I like the idea of it just being very open and inclusionary. And I think the second sentence might be the location to do that. I was thinking the same thing. Okay, good. Like minds. Brilliant. Um, any, any other feedback on that before we scamper forward to the timeline? What's our, our next meeting is 24th, and it's full. Because you were, I was noticing you were going right by it. Can you just run down the agenda really fast for the 24th? Uh, we have continued public hearing for Buckland and Light. <coughs> the I-90, I-495 presentation. How much time do we have for that? Uh, half an hour. Okay. The Wilson Street drainage issue uh, with Warren McDowell. How much time do we have for that? Okay. Uh, special permit for 9B Street for historic structures. Uh, an affordable housing discussion with REC Hopkinton about the Chamberlain Wayland. Yes. Okay, and what time is that? That's at 9.30. 9.30, and we have a half hour for that? Uh, we have, there's no designated time because it goes to the end, we end at 10. There is also the Haynes Farm as-built plan request for bond release on that schedule. Okay. 
Okay. Um, all right, so we, we do have some discussion points. I'm, I'm thinking in terms of the master plan discussion that we keep um, putting off. You, Amy, who, do, who worked on the timeline? Amy and Deb? Um, so actually, Deb worked on it this time. I had started oh. it this Okay, time. yeah. Yep. Um, what does it look like? I just, uh, I sort of upped it, up the ante a little bit, um, and we're a little bit behind the eight ball, but um, I was hoping a kickoff meeting, but I think we need to work on a letter, an invitation letter um, to all those that, uh, that would be interested to make sure we get um, a nice sampling from across the community. Um, so that would have to happen this week. Um, get that letter mailed out and so maybe we're already behind the eight ball um, if the kickoff meeting for the 17th I think would be a bit are you meeting with the new committee yeah that would be that that would so be we have to we have to post the positions for a certain amount of time and then we have to appoint them our next meeting is the 24th so, so we're definitely behind the eight ball yeah so so I think um, are we at the point today where we could send something out yeah, I would like to make sure we we post the positions. Yeah, I and agree. How long do we? Is there a time limit that we need to post them for at least there two is, weeks? And we should all know this because we all monkeyed around with it pretty aggressively not too long. <laughs> um, do you, do you, Kobe? Do you know how long the positions have to be posted for? Which ones are those? If we're forming a new committee, yeah, we're posted. We're advertising for people to apply. Mm -hmm. Do you know how long they have to be posted for? I, th I don't think it's two weeks. I think it's like 10 days. Okay. I don't know. So if we, we could look at an example of like when... You know, we, pro we could probably look it up in the charter right this second, huh? Mm -hmm. On our Smarty... Does somebody want... Do you want to try and look okay. it up? Thank yeah. you. Um, if we could post it this week, maybe we could appoint it at our next meeting? Yeah. Yeah. So it that... It would be really nice that, if we could do that. Yeah. yeah. Because <laughs> otherwise we're pushed out until yeah. July 27th. Exactly. Right. Okay, I'll do yeah, our okay. next meeting after that, July 22nd? Yeah. I will not no, be wait. here next time. What's our next meeting? I'm sorry. I will not be here on June 24th. Okay. Our next meeting after June 24th is? Um, we have July 8th, July March. 8th. Yeah. July 8th, okay. But, um, right. so, um, we may have to, we may, we may have to bump Dave again. <laughs> 495 thing. I think we should try and and um, a should, point next week. Yeah. Next meeting. But we should definitely not bump Dave too far back because I know. those are Maybe kind of. I'm, I, I was being a little facetious. I know. It's, but yeah, stay a little bit late, start a little bit early so that he can. Well, it, let's contemplate starting at 7 that meeting. That's a really good idea, Deb. Thank you for that. If that's okay with everybody, you will not be here. No. Okay. My first miss. <laughs> we, we understand how it happens. June 24th or July 8th? This is July, June 24th is the next meeting. I will not be here either. Ooh, the plot thickens. So, um, so um, I still think, do you, I mean, is everybody still comfortable shooting for appointing yes. on the 24th? Thank yes. you. Okay, appreciate that. Um, so, given that, um, and I think then the timeline needs to be reworked anyway. We can talk about that. Um, we should uh, give a little guidance on the posting. Can somebody refresh me what the makeup of the committee was? Uh, I have the notes here somewhere. but two. It was the Chamber two of Commerce. Two planning board members. Two, two or three planning board members. Two with two... Uh, I'd have to go back and look. Two again. alternates. Two alternates. And four at large. Is Sorry, that two, what we said? Three at large and two planning board, two chamber or business. Two, two chamber. Two chamber. And so two two alternates. Which so it came out to nine. Two alternates. Seven and seven, but two alternates. So seven nine. nine. Yeah. yeah. Well, we uh, want hold to also on. I'm sorry, my math didn't work. Two Chamber of Commerce, two Planning Board member, four at large? Three at large. Three at large, that's why the math and didn't two work. Alternates. And two alternates. And okay. with the alternates encouraged to attend. Well, because I, yeah. <laughs> I think that's kind of a, a, a tough thing. It, when you're an alternate, you kind of slack a little. So if we encourage alternates at in name only, however, Hopefully, taking a big part. So we're going to we're going to expect that people are going to just do it. I I'm all for encouraging, but 
Um, okay. Yes, because if you're an alternate, right, on a committee, and somebody isn't there, you you can have a voting percent. You know, you get a chance to vote, and, and um, not that voting is the whole thing, but you are a functional member of the committee. Um, okay. So, um, what are we calling this? I think we said growth study committee. Growth study committee. 2019 growth study committee. Committee. Um, the two uh, Chamber of Commerce members. Right, 2019, to because this. Live in town. Mm -hmm. Was there any other. Um, um, did, I don't know if we said they had to be chamber members, but just members of the business community, chamber or business community, or did we? We, we said, said chamber, chamber recommendations. Chamber, chamber, recommendations. Chamber, chamber recommendations. But however, living in Hopkinton. Living in, yes, that's yes. Makes sense. Uh, that's okay. kind of All right. Two planning board members, um, uh, three members from the community at large, and two alternates. Okay, so uh, do you feel comfortable putting some language again around a posting with that information, or do you want some? Okay. Um, did you find the I did not. posting guidelines? I'm checking the bylaws because I didn't seem to see it in the charter. So. Can, I, can I have a question about the yeah. chamber? Okay. Do we need to reach out to the chamber to get the recommendations and then? So, how, how does so uh, what typically happens, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, is that when we reach out to the chamber for their recommendation, those people are on the committee as long as they meet our guidelines. We don't particularly vote so on that. To, do we need to advertise for those positions, or is it really it is only by chamber, essentially a chamber appointed position? You know, I would advertise the structure of the whole uh, the whole committee. In, in the language and that we are essentially interested in applicants for the three at large and two alternate positions because the right the chamber uh, appointees will not go through the process but this will let people know what the structure of the committee is intended to be can I ask another question I know a couple of people are missing um, is there uh, is there a particular interest on the planning board to be the other the planning board designees? I would be interested in being one of the designees. I would be interested so as well. So you had also said master plan, right? Yeah, I'd like to look at, but not right away. I'd like to look at the master plan. Um, I have to digest it first, but I, I would like to look at it and how we can incorporate what we learned from this study so that we'll have some kind of input. But that would be a little bit later. I would um, suggest respectfully that um, only one of the two of you um, participate in the growth committee um, and we choose another member not me um, so just based on you know we had you had certain thoughts it's just to get diversity of, of, um, of you know thought processes and so on um, uh, and that doesn't mean the other person couldn't like attend every meeting yeah, I <laughs> yeah. Mean, no, absolutely, 100 percent Mm -hmm. um, I have a tendency to agree, particularly just the dynamics of the three um, proponents of the moratorium. Um, and we don't know how Dave feels about potentially being interested. I am really interested, and we don't know um, about fine. Frank, too. Um, but I, ha I have a tendency, like, I, everybody is welcome, right? These are all open public meetings, and, and uh, everybody is welcome. Oh, I can understand that. Um, but I have a a sense similar. I have a lot to do, so yeah. I, I have a lot of work to do. I'm not so. trying to shove you out of the nest. <laughs> hey, uh, I, I've got more work on my desk than um, so. That's totally. I mean, so we should um, maybe, uh, if you don't mind, reaching out to Dave and Frank just to let them know we're also interested in engaging um, their enthusiasm for participating. Um, and I'm just I'm looking down to my left and to my right too. I'm very bad at getting to my left sometimes. I'm gonna have you sit over here for now. <laughs> um, Left-handed, it's fine. We um, we really do have to have somebody sort of spearhead um, the master plan implementation. How, how do you how do you envision that? Because so I'm it's just there are there is a master plan that was written in two thousand and seventeen with 
deliverables and a and a an action plan okay. and we are the primary owner of it although we are not the deliverable of all action yeah. items but I think we have a, we have a very that. real responsibility for tracking I can I can spearhead that if you'd like me to do that I can do that I can I can um, step aside on this but still stay involved and um, you know and um, we'll spearhead about, something else think about it um, okay. I, I, that would be great if that's true um, but think about it a little bit. But I think we really do need one or two people to really drive us um, on the master plan initiatives. I just want to go back to the posting. Yes. Um, I did find some info. Yep. Okay. So I can't find specifically on subcommittees of the planning board, but just in general, if there's a vacancy, the boarding committee notifies the board of selectmen and then they give notice of one week about when the, the date of the vote will happen. Okay. So in this case, we aren't have the selectmen aren't doing the appointing. They're not. But the one week. But the only vacancy should, reference I could find in yeah, the charter was but about. But we should use the same process. So, so, so it my, seems like at least a week notice. Yeah. Um, so so my question, um, it feels like the mission statement and deliverables would be really helpful to include with the posting because that way people sort of know what they're getting into. I agree. The challenge is, I'm just trying to think if there's some way that we can finalize this and use it but I don't know how we do that without well, having to wait until let, the next meeting. Let me, let me ask this. I have a, a great deal of comfort in having um, Gary finish this with our feedback and forward it to John for use, but I don't know how other people feel. Okay. It's fine, fine by me. I just, I'm okay with that, yeah. I think, I think we know what we want to include yeah, in it. Yeah, And maybe Thank then you for that. John can edit or push back if there's something I've missed or something that can be redone that we can kind of yeah I can just I agree. work with them on that um, and then we can get the posting the posting should be up for at least a week so we have plenty of time I mean not so much plenty of time to get this done and get it out there but we should be able to do it by our 24th meeting I mean, I'll talk to his clerk mm -hmm. more likely, just to make sure that everything is fine and if, yep. if, if it's not yep. how it's perceived at this point I'll let you guys know yeah perfect Okay, so and then we've run out of time to discuss the timeline, but um, I'll, I can you know send comments um, electronically. Yes. Um, is that okay, Deb? And I'm we'll sorry. send some comments the electronically. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Sure. About to do that. I didn't really have any. Um. Last week. Mm -hmm. Um. It's. It's, it's just timeline. Everybody line. sends. It's Deb, yeah. everybody sends ideas to you about the timeline. Okay. And you do not send feedback back to anybody. It's all one way communication to you for you to process and put into the timeline however you as see fit. As long as I can. Yep. If I, if I find a stumbling block, I will let people know. Uh, as long you as can, it's. You yeah. cannot discuss over email. You can receive their information, okay. and then when we talk about it next, you can you can point well, out I mean, the stumbling block. I mean, I can always, um, can, if I have a question, I can John. ask John. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's fine. Totally. So if you have burning desires for the timeline, shoot them in one way. Copy, John. One point about the posting. Are we looking for resumes and cover letters? So typically, what there's a form. Very odd. What are we looking for? It is that online form. I don't know if we can get on the Acela. There's a, like a statement of interest for town volunteer. There's some standardized. Um, it's not a. Doesn't really feel like it asks. Doesn't. I don't feel like it asks for a lot. A lot though. Yeah. I feel I mean, like asking I mean, uh, for resumes and cover letters is. A I, I don't think a resume is necessary, but it would be nice to have them. A, a I mean, maybe of it's interest? maybe it's even um, you know um, two hundred words or less. Why are you interested? I mean, just, just one question, something to that effect. Put a put a constraint on it so that people aren't submitting a three page paper on what they want to do. It's just you know, in two hundred words. Why are you interested? And and what skills do you bring? So right now, the, the board and committee vacancy form is, is up. People can apply online to, online to be on a board or committee. Can we just get on that same online form? Do you think? I'll have to ask. I don't yeah, know. I mean, I think that if we can utilize a process that exists, it doesn't ask a lot. But we can ask people. We're going to interview people when they come. Presumably, we'll have more people interested than we have spots for. Uh, and that, those will be good questions. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. So this interview process is going to be on the 24th? It is. 
How much time do we have left? So we talked about <laughs> starting. We talked about starting at seven. Okay. So um, if memory serves, uh, why don't we do it at seven? We'll do it at seven. But if we have, say, eight people applying, that's gonna take well more than an hour to interview them. We only have half an hour to start at seven. What's at 7.30 is 76 May? Buckland Leonard. <laughs> Buckland Leonard. Well, let's, we, you know so what, let's do it at seven, because who, let's do it at seven. Um, and uh, you and I will touch base on the agenda and we'll work, we'll, we'll figure out how it's gonna work. If we'll we get, work. if we get their information ahead of time, it can go out to the committee, so that would it will it, it will go it will out to the committee. will necessarily go out to the committee. Yeah, and perhaps ten minutes per person. If everybody's read up on who's doing what, with a couple questions, maybe we can take ten minutes per well, person. There you go. That's an hour and a half. <laughs> Just <laughs> in, in, in your scenario, basically. Forty forty minutes. Do we have to interview that. everybody, or can we do final yeah. candidates that we interview? Uh -uh. 10, 20, no. uh, well, we typically we typically. Um, throw the gates open and we, we welcome all comers. Yeah. Um, I mean, so, so how's this? We're gonna find out, we'll find out how many people, there's a deadline for when you can apply by, right? So we impose a, a fixed deadline, which would it be, you have to post it for at least seven days. Is that what you said, seven days? We think, yeah. We think, yeah. if that makes sense. And um, we would hopefully have we, I guess it would have to be like, the deadline would have to be the Friday before the Monday meeting. It couldn't be the Tuesday. So I and assume that the seven first. days does not include weekends? Does exactly. So if, the 20, if we go backwards from the 24th, uh, seven days would be the 13th would be when they could start applying or is when it would be posted. So that gives us essentially two days. But we'd have to have a deadline before the meeting. Yeah, so basically yeah. we'd have to post it tomorrow or Wednesday. So, so we're looking at the days. we're looking at the first meeting in July, realistically, right? Okay. Well, so if we posted it on, yeah. if we posted it on the twelfth and accepted applications through the twenty first, is that not enough time? Well if we accepted applications through the twenty first, that would give Monday to review. review. What's that? That would give Monday to review. Yes. So if you if you wanted more than one meet one more than one day to review. Excuse me one second. I'm gonna entertain a motion to open the public hearings um, on Whisper Way make and to continue them after we conclude this brief discussion. I would make that motion. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions, we'll be right with you. Thank you. So, Go ahead. Did, what, did you finish or? Uh, so if, it, I was just saying if we wanted more than one day to review, because we close at two on Friday, so I wouldn't be able to send anything out right. on, at okay. the end of business on Friday. So you guys wouldn't have the weekend. I mean, I could send the ones that we've received, but I don't think that would be fair to anyone who submits at the end. Okay. Are we meeting July 8th or not? Or not yes. because of the holiday weekend? We are. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just throw one other thing out there. I, I have, um, at least once anyways, applied for a subcommittee. Yep. Um, and their interviews were not at their meetings. It was a separate interview process. In town? Um, yep. For the, the the, it was for the um, athletic turf field subcommittee. I remember because I was in Tokyo at the time, so I did my <laughs> interview by phone with, um, it was D. King, it was somebody from, it was a subcommittee of the school committee. So I, I just throw it out there because as we're trying to move fast here, um, and I, I realize the yeah, time is short. Yeah, I, I, I realize we want to keep everything within our open meetings and whatnot. I just don't know if there's another option, and that's where I was thinking. Yeah. Even if we were somehow able to narrow finalists down, and then the finalists come in, or, or if there was some way to to keep this moving a little bit more efficiently, and I, I don't know. How people feel about it, what's appropriate and what's not, but mm -hmm. maybe there's some option to advance it outside of our meeting schedule. Um, I feel pretty strongly that the established process for um, posting 
and interviewing and appointing volunteers for something like this is the best way to go. So could I'm we, a big fan of uh, complete transparency. You are? I am. Uh, I do think we should streamline our interview process in that case since our meetings yeah. are so packed. Yeah. So maybe have a, a designated set of questions that everybody answers, yeah. which uh -huh. we would want to do anyway. What do you mean by streamlining? I don't know. It seems if we each ask a question and we go, everybody goes around, that's really time consuming. And I yeah. don't know if it really changes our mind yeah. either. So maybe either a super small number of questions or just have everybody, everybody introduce themselves. And I guess it, until we know who applies, it's really hard to so say. I maybe we don't ask questions. Maybe we have. Maybe we just have them. We have them respond. Them. They give their. They have a, two minutes, and they make their. Just no different than a, a debate or meet the candidates night. There's a time constraint, and they make their case. We give them an idea of what we're looking for, and then we hmm. vote. There's kind of three possibilities. There's less candidates than we'd hope for. Right. There's, <laughs> there's the above what we'd hope for, and there's then there's an exceeding amount. And what would we do in those three options? Right. Like if it's less. It go quick. If it's about what we expected, fine. But if it's more, it's just gonna derail a whole. Basically, from now till, like it's gonna, it's not gonna quicken the process. It's gonna make it longer. So I look at it as we're we're, made, we're potentially setting ourselves up for a, a failure by having, like, to pick candidates the next meeting, like. Yes, yeah, so July. It seems more reasonable. If, oh, totally. If we had all the applicants in within by the next meeting um, and we could know how to prepare I think that would be the logical thing to do and we're also assuming they'll they can all be here on yeah, July 8th right. the Monday after a holiday week yeah that's it yeah we are not going to be able to um, necessarily point. entertain everybody's schedule Monday July 8th right who are applicants so put that in the how about this we make sure people know in the posting that the um, interview process will be on July 8th, so that they're f forewarned. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe we make the um, applicants due by the, 20, the 22nd, so we have them at our meeting. We know the number. That's at, great. Then we can the, determine the process depending on the we can determine the process on the 22nd? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Does that make sense, John? Applications will be due June 21st. Friday or the Saturday? They can come in on Monday by by two. Fourth. Yeah, the twenty fourth. I'm sorry. Um, Monday by two, and then you'll at least know the number. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we can set our process. Okay. All right. Thank you for your patience. Whisper away. This is... Is this new material? Um, or was it in our... When was it? June 10th? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we might have that. Yeah, I yeah. think you got... I think you have... You should have both of these. Yeah. The first just is a, the list, list, list of where. Okay. okay. We have both of these, yeah. Okay. So, uh, good evening. My name is Elizabeth Mininy from Gary Aaron Halnan. Uh, I was involved in this uh, project actually way back when we were doing the preliminary, <coughs> uh, and then I've been overseeing it with uh, with Dan, who has been here at the other meetings. Um, since Phil couldn't be here tonight, I thought we should try to focus on uh, the, not necessarily focus on his letter since. That's not as helpful. And to focus on the things that um, we want to make sure that the board is in a, isn't, doesn't need any additional information from us on. Uh, so the uh, list of waivers is one of the, uh, one of the things that we want to make sure that um, the board is comfortable with all of the waivers. Uh, so if we want, we can go through them one by one. Um, 
the first one is fairly straightforward um, cross sections of the road uh, this is waived in a lot of towns nowadays there it's the, the way everything works with construction um, it's just not as necessary to do the cross sections it's not needed in the process of uh, construction the way it used to be so uh, Phil had asked us to provide four uh, which we intended on and, and I believe we've already um, sent over to him and we're just waiting for final approval from him uh, on those. So that's just a procedural thing. Uh, Why don't we do them one at a time and we'll let people ask questions. Does anybody have um, questions on the first waiver request? So Phil has asked for four. Correct. Which you intended to provide. We have provided to him. He has not had a chance to review them yet. T tell me why they are no longer needed in the w way that uh, roads are constructed now. Uh, so everything, uh, uh, basically all the information that we need or that the contractors need is in the computer. We have it in the computers. Um, this, it was really something that was needed back before we could easily provide that information. Um, so they would use it to do <coughs> cut and fill analysis and things like that. And the computers do all that fun stuff now. All right. Might be something to look at, huh? Anybody else have questions? Um, just to, yes, sir. go ahead. I was just going to say, did Beta agree that they were not necessary? They, he, he agreed that we should, or he requested only four of them. Yep. Um, just and that's and basically that's to give you what a typical cross section would give you, um, and I know that he's picked those specific s spots for a reason. Um, the first three are in that wetland crossing area, mm -hmm. so um, just to again kind of give you a better idea of what the what the cotton fills are going to look like in that area. Mayor, um, thank you. Um, on Beta's letter of June 6th, he just said that the cross sections that have been provided thus far in the detail sheets are not clear. So you have this comment from him. Yep, so. we've we've actually already um, revised them okay. and so resubmitted them to him. And again, we're just looking um, just to make sure that they're exactly what uh, he is looking for. Good. So we're very confident that that's not a problem for us to meet his requirements. Um, it's just a matter of whether or not you guys are going to be looking for all of the cross sections or not. Okay. Okay, number two. Uh, trees to be uh, retained within the right of way. Uh, as you all know, I think you've all walked to the site. The, um, it's a pretty steep site and in particular because of the wetland crossing. Uh, or the existing wetland crossing of Whis Whisper Way. In order to bring that uh, right of way into compliance, there's, uh, there's, I guess, a, enough grading that's going on that we're really grading the total width of the right of way. So there's no, there's really no opportunity for us to save trees within the right of way. Um, Obviously, it's open, open space subdivision. We're going to save as many trees as we can, um, but that's going to be outside of the right of way. So, since we're not able to really save any trees in the right of way, we're just asking for a waiver that we don't have to show the trees that we can't save. Anybody have any questions? So, um, I guess a couple of questions or comments on that so um, how remind me again how wide is the right-of-way I believe it's a uh, 50 feet wide and and so I, I understand in particular where there's substantial grading going on and that the you know the there's some work to do outside of the roadway width but in parts of the development that are not as steep 
there's no opportunity. And I, I, I guess I, I mean that 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 bylaw exists because we like. I mean, we generally like neighborhoods much better that have some mature trees, and it adds a lot to the look and feel and the, the rural character that we talk a lot about. And so I guess I'm struggling a little bit as to why no, what, why, why no trees within the entire street can't be so, preserved. Um, the, the way that we can see what can or can't be saved um, is within the, the right-of-way lines, um, the grading that, the, and this, these are all, these are minimum, actually, we are, we're grading, that's another waiver that we're asking for. Um, grading within the right-of-way is required to be three to one, and we're actually grading it at two to one to try and skinny it down as much as we can. Um, but even at two to one, the grading, you can see over here um, comes all the way over to the, these grade lines come all the way over to the edge of the right away so even in the areas where it's not as steep because we have to carry minimum and and stay under maximum grading um, you basically are catching up with so it would be nice if we could be the existing Whisper Way is really steep within this area, much steeper than we're allowed to be in in the new with the new regulations. So we have to shallow this out, which means that this gets steeper. Even if even if right now it's not quite as steep, we're steepening it because we got to make up the difference. Is the is the best I can. I okay. So because you can't follow the natural contours of the land, you have to disturb more soil, which means you have to yes. effectively eliminate all the trees in the right of way. Yes. I, I can see if there's, a, if there's any areas, but I, I mean, over here, we're, we're well outside of the right of way um, with the, um, with the, Contour, so. Are there some areas around the cul-de-sac? No, that's the, the, in the cul-de-sac we're way out. Oh. Because the, the maximum grade in the cul-de-sac has to be less than in the rest of the road, so by flattening out a large area like that, you're creating more grading outside of it. Um, I mean, I, so, so I'll just ask one more question on this. So, so have you considered at all um, replacing some of those trees with new trees? Uh, I'm in areas that, in areas where it's not, uh, where we don't have two to one grading, um, we could we could potentially do that. Um, on you're not going to get any vegetation to, you're not going to get a tree. It'll it's not a good situation to put a tree in a two to, on a two-to-one slope. Um, shrubbery works well on a two-to-one slope, but not a tree. Um, one of the other things, just you know, to follow with the, you don't want to just have a big, wide open um, runway. Yeah, um, the almost all of these houses are going to be set, set back significantly from the road um, and we're looking at common driveways for most of these lots so we're cutting down on the driveways by half almost uh, and their, their existing vegetation all in the front of the um, house lots is, is going to remain you don't have the same grading issues on the driveways? There's, um, there are less stringent um, requirements for the, for the driveways. They're not as wide. Um, I know we're working, that's one of Phil's comments, is we, we have to do profiles for the, uh, and grade out all the driveways. So that's something we'll know a little bit better when we complete that task. But... Um, 
Can I just ask, is this a function of the challenging site more than anything and utilizing the road piece that exists? Well, yeah, utilizing the, the road, the existing Whisper Way is, is certainly um, part of the challenge um, because it goes up through a very steep area. Uh -huh. um, whereas if we, if we were doing something from scratch, we may come... You know, it would have to get up past the, the wetlands and the vernal pool, but you may come across um, more um, parallel, couldn't get the word, uh, parallel to the contours as opposed to continuing up um, perpendicular to the <coughs> All right. That's a clarifying question. Yes. So if I'm reading it correctly, they're not required to retain any trees in the right of way because it's not a scenic road. They're just asking for not having to list the ones. Say it again? Mm -hmm. They're not really required to retain any trees in the right of way because it's not a scenic road. They're just asking for a waiver from having to show them on mm -hmm. the No, right? it's, the waiver is from retaining them in the right of way, right? That's not the way it's written. The what does way it say here? Trees to be retained within the right of way to be shown. Due to the narrow width of the right of way, the required grading for the roadway, no trees will be able to be retained within the right of way. Right. So, what is the re what but is the requirement? requirement is to show which ones will be retained. I think. Right. I, I wanted to clarify with John. And we'll the yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Yeah. So I'm worried we're overthinking this. I can look into this if you want to move on. So it's not even a waiver then. Well, it's a it's a waiver on the requirement for the trees. That's what I'm saying. Well, right? Is it really even a waiver? No. If what we is can't save any trees. What is the requirement for the trees in the right of way? Is there a requirement? That's what he's checking. Yeah. <laughs> Amy always clarifying. I like it. Um, while he's looking, can we do the um, proposed street lights? Yeah, so then the next one is um, location of the proposed street lights. The applicant is requesting that street lights not be installed within the subdivision. Um, that's, again, that's something that boards have uh, tended to go back and forth on. Um, I'm comfortable time. with no street lights myself. But. So. Just go either way on this one. <laughs> I like it to be safe that somebody can walk their dog at night and you know find their way, but at the same time I don't headlamps, want to Headlamps, Amy, come on now, headlamps. <laughs> <laughs> but then we had the situation at Davenport Lane where they, the developer just installed more lights because people were complaining that they had to walk their dogs with headlamps, right? <laughs> and then they installed something that wasn't dark sky compliant and we had right. to approve it after fact. Well, so I'd, I'd almost rather <laughs> approve dark sky compliant street lights. I don't know, but I can go either way if people feel so. So uh, can we um, can we waive it and also, but 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 you know, make sure we add the requirement that if lights were to be considered, that have to be dark sky compliant. I don't know. Can we do that? I don't know, because I think what happens often when there are no street lights that um, homeowners install a light at the end of the driveway. Yep. Um, which I don't know if that would be required to be dark sky compliant if they install it later. Still right. America. Yeah. <laughs> um, can, can we add this to the <coughs> Zach list of potential things? Because I, I feel like we we're back are. Back to lighting. <laughs> well, believe me, it's on there. there. I know, I, I know, but I mean, yeah, at, no. at the end of the day, I, I think that it's. I think that that we as a board have made some assumptions, and I, I don't. To Amy's point, I don't know if. I mean. Davenport wasn't a great example for sure, mm -hmm. right? But we we did have a discussion about it, and and it's still it is still on the work plan. There's there's uh, some strong feelings. <laughs> I, I guess you know specifically the to street lights. Street lights in some yeah, no, that, that strong either. strong feelings, huh? Strong feelings, of, yeah, about dark sky compliant and things like that. Mm -hmm. on, I, on both sides, I imagine. Yeah, because okay. I'm like you know, I think really black streets are hard to navigate at night. <laughs> so, so stay <laughs> off my street. <laughs> um, um, it is it is a dead it is a dead end um, with very you know there's a maximum of ten houses um, and 
most of these people, when even when they get to their driveways, are going to still have quite a ways to go without streetlights. So um, I don't know that, and the existing Whisper Way doesn't have any streetlights. So um, regardless of you know how how you would look at a typical requirement, uh, I think in this particular case it probably makes more sense than normal to, to not have it. If you're putting in a full subdivision uh, with, you know, 50, 60 houses, you know, that, and you have multiple intersections, that's, that's a different scenario, I Just believe. To take the flip side of it, we're going to have, um, you know, potentially a very long cul-de-sac with very long shared driveways. And uh, from an emergency response standpoint, that could be challenging. It might be worth asking the fire department, too, how they feel about it. Okay. Look at me arguing the other way. I like my dark sky. <laughs> you, know, you just can't know how the future homeowners will prefer you it can't. either. You, no, you, you some can't. Some people would prefer completely dark and some and would like light. Most likely some of the people there will want it and some people yes, won't. Right. Yeah, so we can't exactly. win. You really can't. That's why you go out there with the flashlight and shine it on the sensor and shut it off. I mean, these kids. That's right. There you go. Oh. Well, I might. What did we find out? So that section is the definitive plan contents and it just basically is what you are to include in the definitive plan. Is what trees are going to be location, retained. location, variety, and size of proposed tr street trees and trees to be retained within the right of I feel like that is a waiver that doesn't need to happen because they're not retaining trees in the right way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. I agree Look with at that. Mm -hmm. well, Excellent. Right list. <laughs> it did, wasn't quick. It wasn't pretty, <laughs> but it happened. Okay. Thanks, Amy. Um, so with the with the lights, your is the board's feeling that you would pretty much go with whatever the recommendation of the I think you have a mixed response from the board, but I think, <laughs> sorry, but I think that um, it would go a long way to find out what the fire department thinks about the whole thing, including the lighting for response. For me. Would it be useful to take a straw poll? Because I don't really have a sense of how we feel on it. I, I don't know. A straw poll of uh, whether or not we want lights or don't want lights? Because if I'm the only one that wants them, there's no, we can just say we don't need them, right? We can take a strap home. Lights or no lights? Uh, I live in a subdivision, Haynes Farmway. We have no lights, so if the homeowner wanted a light, it's up to you to put it in. So I have no lights. Even though I prefer lights, I think we have generally waived them, so I would not suggest we change that precedent right now. 100% uh, no lights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty much a no light person myself. Well, I think Mary makes a good point, but I still prefer dark sky compliant street lights. I like um, a certain percentage of light. I think that some of the, some of the neighborhoods that we have, the street lights don't compensate for the entry location of entering safely and exiting safely. So I would say at the end of the street, I, w I would think it would is ideal and it's an easy it's an easy place to put a light. Um, even just identify the street itself and, and the, and the um, street sign. Um, I'm a little concerned that how much, however much we like dark sky compliant, we have these humongously long driveways that are very narrow and they're all going to want to have lights and the houses are going to have lights. So whether we provide them on the streets or not, they're going to have lights. So I, I suggest I, I suggest at least at the end of the street um, to have some kind of wayfinding device. Okay, so I, I would I think I would prefer some street lights, but I think the arguments are reasonable. So if I'm the only one, then I think I I would actually make sure you ask the fire department how. Yeah, they no, feel. Uh, this is a this certainly is, certainly we will, but yeah, I, if, because I mean I can be, I'm 100% no lights, but if the fire department says wow, right, we're, we're going to struggle in there. I'm going to think it different through differently. Of course. It's also right next to the highway too. But. So no, no lights unless the fire chief. If you remember doing that's that, that's exactly. Okay. What's that? No lights unless the fire chief says we need them, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, I think that's the decision right there. Doesn't affect 
it only oh. affects the and farthest right, the farthest right house, the the one, the ones one. that are one which one is added yeah. is eleven and twelve. Yeah. So waived and less uh, it's a sound. Apartment. Apartment. All right, road slopes, three to one max. You talked about that already. Anything more? No. Uh, nope. Uh, like I said, we're we're trying to minimize the um, impact of taking down any trees uh, that we don't have to. Uh, so the two to one slope is um, is not something that we prefer to do. Um, it's but it it is uh, an acceptable practice. Um, and from an engineering standpoint, so. Um. Anybody have any questions or objections to that one? What did Beta say about this one? Do you, you know what? They just asked uh, to define the limits where this is necessary, and Beta has determined that they have provided those limits. Okay. okay. Are we okay? Um, disturbance in natural topography due to the wetlands at station one plus 50 depths of fill are greater than eight feet to facilitate the crossings talk to us uh, so again this is actually partially due to the fact that the existing whisper way does not meet the grading uh, maximum grading requirements so in order to Basically, it comes down too yep. steep and then comes up too steep. So, in order to maintain the existing right of way and um, and meet the new grading requirements, we have to fill more than uh, more than eight feet. Um, that fill is limited to the right of way only. That's where we have the um, retaining wall. So, it's we're not. You know, drastically, we're not changing drastically changing the um, grade, except for making the entrance safer uh, and to meet current standards. All right, and Concom, it is on board with this. Uh, yeah, that this is the it's yes. from them. That's it would be yes. They definitely do not want us filling more wetlands. <laughs> right. To be able to to. Right. Um, to, to create slopes. Right. So, okay. Anybody questions, concerns? I feel like you have a go on that one too. Um, what's number six? Oh, disturbance in natural topography again. Uh, so, again, part of this is um, just staying within. Um, Staying within the existing right of way, the existing um, existing road goes through some areas that are over 25% slope, and um, and then to, once we get to the end of the existing, which I can't don't know exactly where that is, but once we get to the end of the existing one, existing uh, whisper, there's another steep area that, um, in order to use the existing road we need to continue off the end it's of it same, same it puts thing. us into into areas that have 25 percent we um, avoided them to the greatest extent possible um, and at, at some point in the process we did show you uh, and I and uh, Phil had asked for a plan that showed where the areas of 25 percent greater than 25 percent slopes were so that he could see that we were staying out of them to the greatest extent possible. So um, we did do it to the greatest extent possible and uh, we're just asking for a waiver for the uh, areas where we couldn't avoid it. Any questions? Just to clarify, this is, a, this is always going to be a private street, not a town street? A town street. It is a town street. So, so those slopes are something that DPW is gonna have to deal with. But, but it's not the road itself. No, it's, it's the, not the, the land that the road is it's being the built existing, across. It's the existing road mm -hmm. goes through areas. No, the, the new road is going to go through areas that have an existing slope of 25%. They will not be 25% once, okay. once we're done. Got it. <laughs> perpendicular to the road. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Number seven. Go ahead. 
the side slopes of the uh, detention ponds? So again, the detention ponds, um, typically we do three to one slopes. Uh, we're tightening up all the grading by doing two to one slopes um, and one of, and, and maintaining the top of the berm at 10 feet so that the, uh, so that the detention basins are uh, just as accessible as they're supposed to be. Um, we, uh, he, we speak about an impervious, um, an impervious core. So one of the concerns that Phil had with us going to the two to one slope was the migration of water from the berm, through the berm. So to uh, prevent that from happening, uh, we are installing an impervious, uh, basically an impervious barrier in the center of the berm. Um, vertical. It's the same thing we do for septic systems when we can't meet the three to one slope that is required for those. So, um, I, he can, was. Can you show us where that is on the plan? Well, I, I mean, so this this detention basin, um, you know, you can see that we're. This is a steep slope. Basically, once you get to the top of the berm, which is right in here, basically right where this dashed line is, uh, that's basically where the impervious barrier would be in a vertical sense, so that the water, it wouldn't really come out this way, but um, so that the, the water can't seep through the side of the berm and out the side of the hill into the wetland area. Okay. Anybody have any other questions or concerns? Objections? Just have a cool, quick question. Sure. With the chair. Yeah. Uh, in the beta letter, there's a waiver seven uh, for section 8.2.6.A, and that's, I don't think, in this letter. 8.2.6. Yeah, so disturbance eight. to natural topography. Applicant seeks a waiver to provide side slopes two to one when maximum slope is three to one. 8.2.6.A is number four. Oh, right. Number yeah. Four. Okay. Yep. Yeah. The list in, that I have is it's just, just different. Different order. Okay. Okay. My, my, my apologies. No, nope, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, is everybody okay with the detention ponds? Yes. All right. Uh, oh, and then number eight. This is also to do with the detention ponds, yeah. and this is actually a new one. Uh, so I'm, I doubt B, I doubt Beta has addressed it, but um, the or he may have brought up the fact. Um, so, and I'm not exactly sure why this is in the regulations, to be honest. Because, uh, but there's a requirement for 25 foot setback to property lines. Um, that's not something that's um, that I've ever heard of, to be perfectly honest. Uh, sometimes we have property lines going right through a basin. It all because starts here. Because <laughs> um, the, the basins are within an easement, so you know there's limitations to to what um, property owners can do within the easement anyway. So I don't, I'm not sure exactly why the board would care if it's close to 20, closer than 25 feet, but that's um, due to the, due to the slope and, um, and certainly the challenging um, site we have with regard to the, to the wetlands uh, and the vernal pool. We are limited in an area, plus there's, and this is actually an existing house that's remaining, so the way that the property line sits, there's just really not much we can do to get it further than 20, get it 25 feet away from the property line. Um, if Maybe. there's a reason that, if there's something that we could do to address concerns, we'd be happy to do so, but. Okay, so we'll, we will have to hear from Beta, but anybody else have any questions or concerns? 
I, I just cur uh, I don't know the history of that uh, bylaw, but um, if we could find out the history of that, like, is it ch child safety? Is it water getting into basements? Why, why does that? Why? I think we'll ask Beta for sure. Well, even if some. So, uh, as far as protection, whether or not it's on a property line is is irrelevant to to the safety. That's there. You know, there's other measures that we take, like such as screening, which is one of his comments. Um, which is a little bit of a safety and a little bit of uh, just a visual, but um, sir, again, if there's something that if there's something that we can do to address the concern, we'd be happy to do so. So, um, and we're just so we're going over time here a little bit to try and drive through your list, so at least this is mostly accomplished. Yep. Um, number one on the back side, the zoning the buffer of a minimum. Of, of 100 feet go ahead uh, yeah we've t I, we have talked about yep. this pre previously um, the any place that we're looking for um, I know this corner here is is one of the um, because of because of where the existing whisper way is and trying to come around uh, trying to follow that it basically brings us too close to the property line for us to provide a hundred foot buffer in some areas uh, and then um, I think up where the septic the community septic system is um, is also um, an area where we were going to be with in the hundred feet um, we're re asking for a reduction only to 77 feet and uh, it's adjacent to existing open space so usually this buffer is sort of to buffer the subdivision to the surrounding development. Uh, in this case, the surrounding development is just more open space. So that we prize. <laughs> it's not just open space to Mrs. Kramer. <laughs> um, okay, does anybody have any questions or thoughts on that in particular? Um, okay, um, and then the lot frontage depth. So um, basically, again, due to the, the uh, steepness of the property, um, we are actually setting these houses back significantly from the road. Typically in an open space subdivision, you're kind of pushing, you, they reduce all the setbacks for everything so that you can cluster the houses together. Um, we're kind of gonna, really we're going to have more open space along the road and then have the house developments and then you're going to have the, the actual legitimate open space so um, just the way that the the lots are constructed or, or uh, laid out to accommodate the common driveways and and that um, almost like a pork chop lot kind of um, scenario it just doesn't lend itself to being able to meet the lot frontage depth. Okay, any questions or concerns about that? Looking to the left and to the right. I just, I mean, I just wanna say I, I, I struggle with the shared driveways and I know that that's not requesting a waiver on that, but I just, it just rubs me wrong. It just feels like you're you're we're, you're, you're forcing a lot in here, um, and like I said, there's not any one particular waiver that I have an issue with, but um, I don't know. Just it's a lot of them. Felt felt the need to say that it just it just feels it feels a little forced, and particularly with the shared driveways. And I just I know um, there's a an appropriate place for it. It just seems like there's a lot of long shared driveways well, and, and there's a lot of things that are being done to to accommodate that here so i know muriel lives on a shared driveway She's very <laughs> sensitive about it but um so the the length of the driveways actually is one of the reasons that i think it makes the most sense for there to be common driveways on this particular um site because again with an open space subdivision we're trying to limit the amount of um of tree growth that we're taking down and you know one of these driveways is 800 feet of shared and then another 200 feet so if if we 
if we gave you two separate driveways, you're now doubling 800, you know, doubling the um, width. No, I, I, I agree. For 800 I, feet. It also doesn't make sense to have two driveways running next to each other, which there are in some places you, you, you do see that. I just. Right. Um, I, I, I understand your concerns. I just. Um, so I have two points, and I, I really do like my shared driveway a lot, and I like it because I'm set back off the road. Um, and when my kids were romping around in my yard, I didn't really have to worry so much about my busy street. Um, and it, uh, in, our, in our experience too, it, it lended itself to building a really nifty little neighborhood where the kids could just fly around. Um, so I can see how it could be um, fabulous. And I have, I have no objections to it. The thing that I'm struggling with is the one that's not here is the the long cul-de-sac and the really long driveways. Um, and don't we have to waive the, the length of the cul-de-sac? So that was a point I was gonna bring up. I don't think the planning board can waive the length of the cul-de-sac. Oh, wow, so the, he's new. The, the OS, the, in the open space regulations, yeah. the maximum cul-de-sac length is 1,000 feet. Yeah. And right now it's proposed as 1,040. 1,040. So then that's... Uh, uh, we can wave it in. We can wave so it in traditional, but it depends on. It depends, yes, thank you. It depends on how. It de the, the, we didn't intentionally propose it. Uh, actually, both uh, our firm and the uh, surveying firm both came up with um, two different calculations that both were under a thousand feet. Um, your regulations don't specify specifically how to measure the cul-de-sac. Um, which can ask a lot of regulations do, so that's certainly something you guys should look into. Um, we can, so basically, um, there's the two, the differences at the beginning and the end are you can, it can be measured from the edge of pavement or from the edge of the right of way at the beginning. Uh, I've, and I, actually, I've even seen it where you do it from the center line of the um, road. So there's several different starting points that you can go with and just on, this, on the other end is the same thing. Um, there's some towns that do it to the beginning of the bulb, some do it to the middle of the bulb, some do it to the pavement at the end of the bulb, some do it to the right of way at the end of the bulb. So depending upon how you want to measure it, uh, it either already complies or it doesn't. Um, so if you want to go along with um, Beta's measurement, then we'll, um, this is the difference, is the pink to the blue. Okay. Pink is what we have existing. The blue is what we would have to move. Beta would do. And I'm sorry, excuse me, the measurement that exceeds, you know, the, the maximum length, that is based on the end of the pavement at the far end of the circle is that what it is it's so based on yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm sorry yes. that's what the measurement yes. is based on if, if you go from um, if you go to the end of the uh, actually I'm not hundred percent sure if it's the end of the pavement or the end of the right away okay well that's on the far side okay but it's on the far side of that circle the far side, side yes it All seems right, like if they could just work with beta to, to get something that's a thousand, that would be fine, right? I'm um, say it again. If they could work with beta to determine a measurement that is. Yeah, well, I think that we're hearing is that we don't have any authority to to, um, to waive it to waive that. Right, but you do have the authority to say whether or not where the measurement is from. Well. I suppose we probably do, but I think we should probably ask our engineers how they do it so it's consistently done. Um, so that we aren't doing it differently for this um, so, than any other way. And it sounds like they can just fix it by. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, yeah. Uh, it's not a. Yeah. It's not as simple as uh, th okay. there's a whole bunch of lot line changes that have to be made. So it, it's. Well, let's find out from Beta um, how they. Well, measure. obviously they measured they. They are, they have already said that this is a thousand. This it's forty feet too right? long. A thousand forty, right? So. If if you're gonna go along with whatever, then we're gonna we'll change this yeah. so that it he is in agreement that it's under the thousand. So that like my, my 
um, hope is to get a be able to get a, I really think we have a chance of getting a clean letter from beta prior to the next meeting. So that's okay. why I wanted to get these things okay. um, sorted so out. So I, 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 I would opt to comply with beta's measurements for consistency. Okay. Can, I, I don't know what we other We can ask beta how they've, t how they've determined <coughs> that measurement, whether it's from center line or, or edge of pavement, and then figure out. I'll talk, we can talk to Phil. And okay. All right. Um, so I, I would, if I could say something, yeah, I would ahead. throw a whole kink into the works and I would, I would try to look at some other designs that reduce the length of driveway. I have some real concerns about what's going on. Um, and I think there are some ways to loop the road around, um, um, back on itself or, um, I, cause I, 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 I guess I could echo Gary's, Gary's point is that I'm just not comfortable with the length of driveway for, for rescue for the whole night sky thing. I think it's wonderful. Um, and I know Muriel's neighborhood and it's very, very different. <laughs> it is. Um, and I, and I just want to say for the whole wholesomeness of raising families in these bigger houses, that it's isolating these people from communicating with each other. And I think that some of the, some of those ramifications should be looked at as well. That's just, I yeah. don't, it's a total kink in the works and I don't so, mean to be, but it's just a concern I have with looking at the plan. So looping the road around is actually not allowed by your regulations. Mm -hmm. That's something that we actually proposed in our original, um, our original submittal in, was, was a looped road. Right, the um, lot just doesn't, well, it's, it's, well, the, it's the constraints of the lot, right? Not, no. we no, no, at the, can't, where the driveway, where there were two different entries. That's but, allowed, yes. Right. That's what I thought you meant. So, so, so. You that's a, that's allowed. I'm saying, she, she was I saying was looping, looping around, around. So that's I got not you. back around. Do you know what the itself. actual reg, reg, regulation that, that doesn't allow that is? It, it's the measurement of a dead end is from the end. So if you looped it around. Mm -hmm. I don't have a marker, otherwise I would just. Sorry. No, but it, if you looped it around like this. Well, it'd be, it'd be around like that. It'd be around, yeah, follow your finger around. No, so you, right, right. Right. So You'd need the, the secondary. The dead end, if, we, if we tied back into Whisper here, the measurement yeah. of the dead end is from here oh, all where? the way right. around. You have to have a secondary down. exit. Mm -hmm. right. So, so okay. the other one that I was thinking of at the end of the last meeting, but it would take out more trees, was to connect the, what is it, um, 11 and 12, take their road and pull it through. So that's a dry, so that's the, basically if we were gonna do that, we would be going for a 24 lot subdivision because that's what we had before. But the, um, if, if we're gonna have, if you're gonna have two access points, then we're not limited to, it. But I just wonder. A completely different subdivision and the, and the conservation commission definitely does not like that because it, it but it starts from a completely different location, so it would be essentially echoing the drive, um, the, the drive for those second two lots. So the only difference that it would make up, so it wouldn't be doing what you did before, it would be doing around and coming up. So, um, so Deb, where's Deb, the, Deb, I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt. I'm going to let them figure out the constraints of their lot and the design they want to propose. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I have you talked to the fire chief? Yeah. Yeah, and what's he saying about this? Common drive. The the whole the whole thing with the long driveways. Oh, he's, well, um, as I mentioned last time, um, we I had talked to him, and um, he he has regulations for the long driveways. Yeah. He has a turn every if if they're long on five. Well, every 500 feet, he wants a widened, widened area so cars can pass. Okay. Um, and at the end, he wants a way to, that the truck can turn around to get out of there. It doesn't okay. have to back out. All right. Um, which we can provide. And Dan's working on the plans for that now, the grading and that okay. turn around. And um, other than that, it was, he wants a widening area every 500 feet. So. Okay. All right. I do. Yeah. I definitely think. Oh, go ahead. Through the chair. And I think there was 
um, in, uh, sprinklers in yes, the, over, the houses that um, were on the... Yeah, we have a couple driveways. Lot there. one, lot five. Yep. And probably, okay. probably lot 11 that. and 12, yeah. if, you know, yeah. just yeah, based on the line. They weren't in it then. I don't yeah, know they, they weren't. They were. yeah. And, uh, okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, we are going to have to wrap up because we're so late. One yep. last thing. Yep. Um, the the um, Phil defers to the, to the planning board on whether or not you're comfortable with the letter from, which is the second piece of paper that I, I gave you guys. Um, so normally in a subdivision, you'd have septic systems on every lot. So yep. we would be providing uh, soil testing for all of, for um, yep. soil testing for those systems on each lot. We're, yep. Right now we're uh, providing a community septic system. Yep. Um, this is the letter from when we had the 22 lots. Yep. Um, but it's the same, we're using the same area for, um, it's, we're using a smaller, portion of the same area that we were proposing in the 22 lots. So we just want to make sure you're comfortable that with this, uh, basically making when, when, and when and if you uh, approve the subdivision, you'd be doing so uh, contingent upon approval of the Board of Health on the final plans for the, for the septic system. I'm comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Because we've discussed it before. Okay. Do you have yep. an access road to that leaching field? And stuff? You'll get an updated letter from the Board of Health, right? When Contingent on their approval, right? An yeah. updated approval. Right. Yeah. You just won't, we won't, unless you need that, unless you need an updated one prior to your vote, we would prefer to hold off on okay. finalize it because we have to finalize all of the um, design in order to get another letter from them. So it'll definitely be a condition, I would think, right? Yeah, that's fine. Which is completely reasonable. Okay. It seems pretty intuitive. I hate to say those words out loud. <laughs> you know, but it seems like it should be um, easily obtainable if the first one was approvable. Yes. Um, okay. When's our next opportunity? July 8th. July 8th. At what time? Wide open unless we do the July 8th is wide open, except we are going to do the interviews, right? We haven't set a time for those, so. Okay, all right. So, um, actually, if we do these folks at 7.30 and give you an hour, um, we can hopefully make real tracks, and then that allows people more time to get home if they work in Boston or whatever, for 8.30 interviews. Anybody object? Okay, let's do it that way, 7.30. Um, do we have to extend decisions? Yes. Somewhere in here. So that would be to the 15th. So, right? Uh, Just for the definitive. Just for the definitive. Okay. So right, because the special permit is the 90. All right. Um, I will entertain a motion to extend the continued public hearings for Whisper Way and uh, to July 8th and the decision on the definitive plan to July 15th so at 7.30. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if I may, for yeah. your information, Dave missed this meeting, so he will have to watch Yeah. telecast and, and sign a form. Frank, can, he's out for the definitive, definitive yeah. but he can still vote on the special permit. Oh, good Lord. If he watches. And our two new members. He not, unless you choose to withdraw and resubmit. On the definitive. On either. On either. Because they've, we've opened Stay. deliberations before they were on the board. So on the agenda today, it said we were opening the one. So was that not right then? Oh. It was continued. Yeah, it should have been continued. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. That's okay. Okay. So. How many votes do they need? Say so for. Um, so they need um, for the 
for both special for, for the definitive that's a majority is that correct okay and you are you don't have one two three um, but Dave can watch so there are six viable votes Correct. and I believe the special permit has to be a super majority you need five of those six votes. I believe you cannot miss one more meeting. If you miss one more meeting, you cannot vote on the is He is pointing his finger right at me. <laughs> <laughs> so I must, I, must, <laughs> I must have missed one of these and caught up. All right, so I have to, be, I have to attend. All right, just so you know, unless you um, decided to withdraw and start over again, but understanding you could fly right through the beginning portion of that. All right, thank you. That was important to know. And I'll try and attend. I can't remember Dave missing a meeting. Dave? Yeah. He's at his daughter's orientation oh. at Penn State. Yes. So, special occasion. Um, okay. A lot of orientations. I have a couple of friends. Yeah. Big schools. Big schools are over the yeah, summer. Yeah, I've never done it that way. What's that? <coughs> Orientation. <laughs> orientation. Yeah, I have a couple friends who are out at orientation this week. So, really big schools. Do can it. I um, move to adjourn? You can. Do it. Is there a second for adjourning? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are we putting minutes? Or huh? Are we putting minutes? Or we did. Oh, we did. Right. Okay. That's all right. You were, you no, were wait, signing. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. You're excused. I did read them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. All in favor, aye. I have to get a monitor. Recycling? Yeah.